to AMS Submetro. Make sure that you come in and join us. Uh, it's free. It's free. It's free. It's free. It's free. Open to all. You can just walk in. Uh, let's have a good laugh on Saturday. And uh, definitely, we're going to also make sure that on the 14th of February, we'll bring you uh, another exciting or uh, an exciting program for the Valentine's Day. This is Good Morning Africa. My name is Kwame Ousu So Let's go and check these uh, uh, songs out. We'll be right back. There was every reason to have the flags out at Westminster. They welcomed delegates to the Commonwealth Prime Minister's Conference. Then came the news of a united attempt to seek peace in Vietnam. President Nkrumah of Ghana will be in the peace mission. And coming out into the garden now, Mr. Shastri of India. Premier Wilson with Dr. Banda, Malawi, and Dr. Oboti, Uganda. If you want to walk with me, my baby, oh There's land to crawl with me, my baby, oh If you want to run with me, my baby, oh Sometimes you walk with me, my baby, oh If you want to fly with me, my baby, oh Sometimes you run with me, my baby, oh If you want to land with me, my baby, oh Best have to fly with me, my baby, oh I love you, so easy to say, oh I need you, I hear you're plenty to tell I want you, it be like saying we didn't play, oh But I'll grow with you, I ain't gonna make one love stay, oh Small, small, oh, I know get you though I'm on the rise, my dad's okay, get bitch, I'm a little nice, baby, I just said we get boom. Will you pay the price? My cat's a bit of my small, small. I know, get you though. I know, get them so cool. Make you no focus. We go in Lotto. I'll buy you a motto. Before the Tondo. Small, small. Ha, 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 ha. 
from uh, you know that wonderful song sang by Ochiame Kwame featuring Ms. V. I love that particular song, Small Small Grow Together. Beautiful, beautiful piece uh, by Ochiame Kwame. And this is Good Morning Africa. We're live on Pan African Television. Make sure that you send us all your views and comments to our WhatsApp number zero five six zero seven four two one three nine zero five six zero seven four two one. Three now. We're also live on Facebook. Uh, link up with us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash pan African television. And let's get interactive on there. You can also like our pictures uh, on Instagram and, of course, follow us on Twitter. Connect with us, you know, share with us your views, comments, uh, your thoughts on uh, pan African television, the programs that we have. And, of course, uh, the topics that we're going to be discussing here on Good Morning Africa. Now, I I'd like to ask you a very simple question. What inspires you? what inspires you i'm i'm inspired always by the fact that i you know i wake up every morning and i'm inspired by the fact that i see people succeed when i see people succeed i'm really inspired when i see people overcome adversity i'm really inspired but what inspires you uh this morning well if you don't know then i'll ask that you you try and understand what it, what inspires you because i think that is also going to help you inspire others okay so let's check out these words of inspiration live on Good Morning Africa, right here on Pan African Television. We'll be right back after these. Every day we grow older. Every day we have one less day in our futures and one more day in our past. You can keep doing the old thing over and over and over again. And then in five years, you will be about where you are today. Or you can decide today, diamond or nothing, and start climbing the mountain. Instead of walking on the flat ground, you start walking up the diamond mountain. If you make that choice, every day becomes a day when you grow higher and stronger every day becomes a day where you look back on the day and say boy i did something good today then you can sleep at night the sleep of success don't you feel like there's a lot more we could be doing like more quality stuff. Yeah, but this is fucking temporary. I mean, we signed up for a lifetime in real estate. And it's not temporary. We've always been those guys. I mean, Cole, are we ever gonna be better than this? It will be hard. You will have to change some things in your life. You will have to exercise discipline in your life. You will have some nights when you will be absolutely so afraid that you won't be able to sleep. You will have some days when you will feel so sad and disappointed with people not keeping their promises. You will have lots of problems. But if you are committed, you will learn from every problem. You will learn from every disappointment. Even your fears will make you stronger. And when you become a diamond, you will look in the mirror and you will say, I am so happy I didn't quit. I am the only problem I will ever have and I am the only solution all right I want you to get this in your heads I am the only problem I will ever have and I am the solution not the upline not the downline not the cross line not the company just me if I want to be a diamond it's up to me if I want diamonds in my downline, it's up to me. I am the only problem I will ever have, and I am the same.
You see, once you believe that, you suddenly believe that anything is possible because it all is up to you. It doesn't take anybody else, just you. When you believe it's out there, when you believe it's out with these people or those people, the upline, the downline, crossline, the company, when you believe that, they have the power and you have no power. But when you say, it's me, I'm the one, then you pull the power into you and anything is possible. Welcome back from, uh, you know, that wonderful inspirational message right here on Good Morning Africa. If you just tune in, we're live on Pan-African Television and you can connect with us on our WhatsApp number 0560-742139. 0560-742139. We're also live on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Pan-African Television. And you can connect with us on Instagram, uh, at Pan African TV, and of course, tweet at us uh, on Twitter at Pan African TV. Make sure you hashtag Good Morning Africa. Hashtag Good Morning Africa. You can send your co questions, comments, and uh, opinions, thoughts, what have you, through. I will definitely get to read them for you right here uh, on Good Morning Africa. Now, uh, yesterday we, we studied uh, a lot on Good Morning Africa, and uh, you know, we taught uh, a lot of uh, the basics in, in French. Uh, bonjour, Kwame, bonjour, Ama, bonjour, uh, uh, Kobi Pan, bonjour, uh, Mr. Mensa, Monsieur, Monsieur Mensa, bonjour, Laurence, uh, bonjour, Merci, bonjour, Joseph Yevo, <laughs> bonjour, Bismarck. All right. So those are the things we studied yesterday, uh, you know, uh, on, on Good Morning Africa. But let's see what Coco has for us today. It's Everyday French on Good Morning Africa. Coco, let's hear you. Hi, guys. Good morning. Just I hope you're all doing great this morning. Uh, my name is Corian Trubacala and welcome to this French Jig segment. And as you already know, I'm here to help you learn and speak French fluently. So uh, today we are going to, uh, to learn the greetings, salutations in French, how to greet, to check up of people you love, your friends and colleagues in the morning, in the afternoon and in the evening. So um, I'm going to read, you can just repeat after me or some, some like to get the, the accent, how I'm pronouncing, I'm pronouncing words. Bonjour, Kweku. Bonjour, bonjour Abina, sorry. Bonjour Kweku, comment vas-tu? Je vais bien, merci et toi? Bonjour Kweku, bonjour, euh, bonjour Abina, sorry. Bonjour Kweku, comment vas-tu? Je vais bien, merci et toi? It means good morning Abina, good morning Kweku, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you, and you? This is in the morning. We use uh, bonjour in the morning, only in the morning. We don't use bonjour in the afternoon. We don't uh, use bonjour in the evening. We use bonjour only in the morning. So if you want to check up on someone in the morning when you get to the office, you can say bonjour, bonjour Alice, bonjour Corian, how are you doing? Uh, okay, it's, that's it. So uh, in the afternoon, we say bonsoir. So what I wanted to say, like, it's in the afternoon and in the evening, it's bonsoir. We don't have uh, a greetings in the afternoon. We don't have a special greetings in the evening. The same thing, afternoon and evening is bonsoir. Bonsoir, Abena. Bonsoir, Kweku. Comment ça va? Ça va bien, merci, et toi? If you see here and here, you, you see a small difference. Comment vas-tu? Here it's comment ça va? It all means the same, it means the same thing. Comment vas-tu? How are you doing? Comment ça va is how are you doing too. So you can answer, uh, je vais bien or ça va bien. The same thing. You can say, ça va bien is I am fine. Uh, je vais bien is I am fine. Ça va bien is the same thing. I am fine. Merci et toi. Always say thank you and you. So um, here is 
when you respect someone like too much or you have a lot you don't have you don't you, you are not closer to the person you can just say to the person like comment allez-vous like how are you doing how are you doing and the person will say nous allons bien merci nous allons bien merci we are fine thank you where are you going like où vas-tu where are you going je vais au travail i'm going to work so um, I'm going to uh, repeat it again, then you see like how I'm pronouncing it and you can also pronounce it after me. Bonjour Abena. Bonjour Kweku. Comment vas-tu? Je vais bien, merci et toi? This is in the morning. Bonsoir Abena. Bonsoir Kweku. Comment ça va? Ça va bien, merci et toi? This one in the afternoon and the evening. Don't forget. Comment vas-tu? And comment ça va? The same thing. Je vais bien and ça va bien. Also the same thing. So there is no difference. You can you can answer je vais bien or you can answer ça va bien. There is no difference. Comment allez-vous? Nous allons bien, merci. Où vas-tu? Je vais au travail. How are you doing? I'm, we are fine, thank you. Where are you going? I'm going to work. So always remember, bonjour, good morning, in the morning, only in the morning, comment vas-tu, how are you, je vais bien, merci, I am fine, thank you, aussi, is also, like I'm also fine, I'm also doing well, je vais bien aussi, bonsoir, in the afternoon and the evening, like I said here, we don't have a specific word or a specific greetings to say afternoon, or good afternoon, or good evening. It's the same thing as bonsoir. Comment ça va? How are you? Don't forget and never forget. Comment ça va? And uh, comment vas-tu? And comment ça va? Are the same thing. You can say comment vas-tu? Comment ça va? The same thing. Je vais bien. Ou ça va bien? Je vais bien. Ou ça va bien it's also the same thing so um we can't do the salutation i mean the greetings salutation in front uh, in french without uh, some of the wishes like what is souhait in french so to wish somebody uh, to have a nice day we say bonne journée like your husband or your children are going to school and work you can just wish them a uh, good day like bonjour this is in the morning bonne nuit like have a good night in the night bonne nuit have a good night bonne journée have a nice day bonne nuit have a good night so uh, we are going to to close this uh, segment we are going to travel to um Côte d'Ivoire to discover uh, la basilique Notre Dame de la Paix. In English is the Basilica of Our Lady of Peace. The Basilica of Our Lady of Peace of Yamoussoukro is the biggest Catholic religious edifice in the world. Its appearance reminds us the Basilica of Saint Pierre in Rome. Located in Yamoussoukro, capital of Côte d'Ivoire, its location has been chosen by the former President Félix Oufouet-Bouani in 1983. But only in 1989 that the Guinness Book of Records recognized the edifice as the biggest in the world. I hope you've learned something today. My name is Coriandre Bakala and I will gladly meet you tomorrow, the same time, the same channel, Pan-African TV. Au revoir. It's a beautiful day I'm gonna make most of it It's a beautiful day A day to share with you You'll make my world go round Yeah, yeah, yeah It's really got me saying Nice girl Happiness brings home happiness.
experience the wide range of top quality and affordable electronics, phones, tablets, home and office appliances from NASCO. NASCO, bring home happiness. How much is this? 600. Wonderful. I think I'll take this one. But um, what's your size? Uh, 44. This is 43. I can tell you 44. That's good. This is the man, your home of quality shoes from the UK. We have various shoes for the office, for your formal and casual occasions. Visit the man in Abilengpe. Our office is located just behind Aquatech. Our telephone numbers are 020-873-7166. You can also reach us on our landline 0302-730-760. We'll be expecting you. Welcome back from uh, that, and I trust that you've, you've learned a lot this morning. Um, you know, this is our own initiative, our own way of, you know, teaching you how to speak basic French. And uh, it's helping some of us recollect uh, the little French we studied back in the day. I, I recall, je vais à l'école, je m'appelle Kwame Owusudan, so pourquoi? Elle fait chaud, je suis malade. All those ones, yes, now I'm trying to, you know, uh, recollect all of those ones and I trust that uh, it's giving or it's bringing back uh, a lot of memories you remember when we we're back in back in back in school uh, the, the math teachers and then the French teachers were really shipping us a lot you know just so we could grasp uh, the, the little French but we, here we are not going to ship you you just have to sit uh, you know behind your TV and then you get to learn a lot uh, about French speaking so they're progress and all of that <laughs> now let's zoom in and uh, check out what is happening in the various newspapers we have across the country now uh, let me first and foremost start off with the big story for today uh, and it's on the front page of the insight newspaper you need to get this uh, this morning and read the story because uh, uh, it's the big story indeed UN warns of threat of terrorism on regional scale in Africa and I think this is a big deal so make sure you grab uh, the inside newspaper this morning and then you read it and clearly understand what the inside is talking about and uh, we have the pictures of uh, Michael Quay uh, honorable right honorable Michael Quay the speaker of parliament and uh, Dr. Mohammed Ibn Chambas uh, picture here and it says parliament is really in need says uh, the speaker so there you have it there you have it Mm hmm yes let's move on and look at uh, the daily graphic the daily, daily graphic says big shake-up and i can see the pictures of cop dr george uh, kufu dampare and i see cop miss rose bio atinga and i see dcop or sabari maoware uh, asari pinkro the third and cop nathan kofi i can see the pictures here and uh well it's saying big shake-up in police Big shake-up in police. Serve with humility, president tells ministers. Uh, apparently, Ms. Utikojaba has been, uh, <laughs> has sailed through. <laughs> and it raises, the, it raises a lot of concerns. It begs a lot of questions to be asked uh, this very morning. So, yes, these are the stories on the front page of the Daily Graphic newspaper. Very well. Now, let's move on and look at what is on the front page of the Daily Searchlight newspaper. It says, uh, stamp out rot in sports. Stamp out rot in sports. Budget may be read on, on March 3rd. Budget may be read on March 3rd. Talk first to Rollins, Kwesiboche uh, Committee told. Talk first to Rollins, Kwesiboche Committee told. Otiko. Uh, 152 NDC zero. <laughs> Interesting headline here on the front page of the Daily Searchlight newspaper. Now, let's move on to today's newspaper that says Mahama vacates 
bungalow mahama vacates uh, bungalow and uh, government kickstarts digital property addressing system there you have it very well okay so we've looked at the inside news report already uh the daily statesman newspaper says um current economic woes to go soon president ekufuado assures current economic woes to go soon president ekufuado assures and major shake-up in police kufibuachi out of ashanti region rosebu atenga now technical uh, we're going to be looking at its implications. You know, I recall that back in the day, and I recall when I was uh, uh, in a university in, in, in Kumasi, we had a lot of armed robbery incidents, uh, incidences in Kumasi. But when uh, Kofi Buachi was sent to the Ashanti region, it, it, you know, it became very subtle, if you like. Uh, it was very quiet, serene, lake of tranquility in the Ashanti region. We didn't really get to hear and see uh, the armed robbery attacks. Let's see if this major shakeup is, is going to resuscitate uh, you know, the issue of uh, of crime rate in the Ashanti region. But uh, that is what it's saying. So, there you have it. All right. The new crusading guide says, probe 13.9 million Vip Villa Saga. Ghanaians demand. Ghanaians demand that there's a probe into the 13.9 million dollars Vip Villa Saga. Shake up in police view. I think I moved to technical. Uh, it's now official. Mimi Dako is new FDA boss. Sags police recruit commits suicide. Oh. Oh, yeah. The man has committed suicide. And that story, well, I don't know whether or not it's true, but uh, maybe we're not going to discuss this, but we may read the story. May read the story. Uh, to you and that story is on page 10 of the new crusading guide there you have it very well let's move on and look at the Ghanaian observer that says Akufuado declares war on Galamsi urges chiefs to join fight Akufuado declares war on Galamsi urges chiefs to join fight. And chiefs root for Alaji Sharif as DC for Atebubu amounting the e payment evolution in Ghana. See, uh, that story is on page nine. Uh, who confirms refusal of ministerial appointment? And parliament vets Zongo minister today. Government urged to support technical universities. These are the stories on the front page of the Ghanaian Observer newspaper. All right, the Chronicle newspaper says um, Otiko sails through after heated debate. And uh, Akutuan Pao is special prosecutor. Uh, he also says Coffin sellers unhappy with low patronage. Hey. <laughs> Coffin sellers unhappy with low patronage. Why do they want people to die? <laughs> Interesting story. IGP draws his gun. Warns public over unlawful seizures. Okay. So there you have it on the front page of the Chronicle newspaper. <laughs> Very well. The Daily Dispatch says uh, Ghana drops in 2016 corruption index 70th in the world and ninth in africa hmm. what is the basis of some of these reports i mean send your views and comments to 0560742139 reports on employment and job creation in ghana by jss and uh, more certified 2016 election results these are uh, on the front page of the daily dispatch newspaper The Ghanaian Times. 
Ghana's most authoritative newspaper says two police commanders arrested for 50,500 Ghana cities uh, fraud. Otiko Jaba approved by parliament. We will deal with Galamse Operator says President Kufuado. President swears in 12 ministers. And uh, that story is on page 16 of the Ghanaian Times newspaper. And uh, there you have them. Mm -hmm. And there's something rather very interesting that I think we ought to look at, even though it is true. Ghana spent $3.1 million at Gabon Afcon. They just ended, you know, Afcon. Ghana spent $3.1 million at Gabon Afcon. Let me ask you a very simple question. And you can also send that through. I'll read them here for you. Do you think it's important for us to spend such huge sums on the Black Stars, uh, you know, when they go out for these tournaments? Do you think we should, the state should spend such an amount of money uh, uh, on these Black Stars players or on any of the uh, national teams uh, to embark on any of, 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 of the sporting activities across the world? Do you think it's indeed important to do so at this material moment when uh, it appears that we are in a certain economic labyrinth and, uh, you know, we're spending such huge sums. So that story is on the back page of the Ghanaian Times newspaper. And um, I'm just asking you this question. Send your views and comments coming in. Let's discuss it right here. The informal newspaper says, approval of Otiko Jaba, parliament could set bad precedent, said Naspa. But it's not cool. Now it's been affirmed. <laughs> She's been sworn in. And so it is not about whether or not the bad precedent has been, is going to be set. If that is the case, that you know um she was she was passed through not as a result of her not doing a national service but because um the majority in parliament thinks that she's fit for uh the position then i think that yeah it begs the question of whether or not um the floodgates argument will be uh you know will be uh, will be used for uh, any other person going forward and so yes it's a, it's a matter of concern it's a matter of national concern it's a matter of national interest public interest and we, we need to interrogate further as to the problem this, this might cause for our democracy going forward. Our work not to make heads roll, says Professor Kwesi Boche. And uh, we'll arrest those who pirate works, says Catherine Afeku. And that story is on, the page, uh, is on page five of the informal newspaper. There you have them. All right. The Daily Guy says, blows over Otiko NDC boycotts. IGP moves Kofi Bwachi in police shakeup, Veep's $14 million mansion in limbo. These are uh, the stories on the front page of the Daily Guy newspaper. There you have it. All right. The publisher says... Um, House of Chiefs pledges support for President Akufuado. A Siama shines at Vertin, discloses creation of Youth Development Authority. Stay off our land, Aden Dapo, royal family of uh, Dowenya, warns land guards. Let's move on now and look at uh, the Herald newspaper that says Mahama. Mohammed security couples hold keys to VIP Villa Saga. <laughs> and uh, Baumia Zaid buried without cause of death. Ken Ferreta destroys Boache Jako as MPP breaks another manifesto promise. Right. <laughs> the Herald newspaper. And finally, we'll be looking at the Flex newspaper. Uh, <laughs> And uh, the owner of the, uh, the Flex newspaper, newspaper happens to be a very good friend of mine, Samuel Bar Flex. Good morning to you. Um, Flex newspaper says, uh, actress Fela McCaffrey talks about ushering agencies and Kobna Adepa to, uh, to serve lovers with Makuma Swadie. And uh, uh, Savi saves Takrade showbiz activities. Uh, well, so basically these are the stories on the front page of uh, Flex newspaper. There you have it. Mm. very well so uh, 
I'm sure definitely that, uh, you know, you're wondering about the Otiko Jabba issue, the fact that, uh, you know, we need to probe into the $13.9 million Vib Mansion saga. Uh, also, the fact that we spent uh, some uh, uh, 31, $3.1 million uh, on the Black Stars at the just uh, ended AFCON. You'd want to send your views, comments to... 0560742139. 0560742139. That's our, our WhatsApp number. Make sure you send it as, as WhatsApp and not as, as a text, okay? And uh, you can also send us uh, a message on Facebook. Go to our Facebook page, like it, and uh, you send us uh, you know a message on there. We'll get to read it for you right here on Good Morning Africa. And the Facebook page is Pan African Television. We're also on, on Twitter. You can tweet at us uh, with all your questions and comments and your views, your opinions, what have you. To uh, you and but make sure you hashtag Good Morning African and our Twitter handle is at Pan African TV Pan African TV and uh, Instagram is also uh, at Pan African TV. So now uh, Sadia and her team are on standby. Let, let me cross over to the newsroom and so so that we can get to hear what is happening in the world of news in Ghana today. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Pan African News. My name is Sadia Seidu. In the teachers tell Ekufu Adu not to forget his promise to them. 14 NPP supporters over old Fadama clash arrested by the police. Nana Adu influential on social media. Police ready to flash out gunmen along the western border. In business, government must invest minerals revenue in mining communities, says Ghana mine workers. And in sports, Australian football star Tim Cahill apologizes over bizarre red card. Now the news in detail. The Ghana Teachers for Progressive Alliance have welcomed His Excellency Nana Ekufuado Dankwa into the high office of President of the Republic of Ghana. Diana AJ has the rest of the story. Teachers are calling on the new Patriotic Party MPP administration to forget the numerous promises it made to them in the run-up 2016 election and work towards fulfilling them without fail. They also reminded the president of his promise to pay in full the salary of the teachers. The teachers reminded the president that over the past years, salary payments have been very clear and prompt. They said they wanted more teachers to own cars, plots of land, houses and other properties. The teachers also asked the president to ensure that they had the opportunity to pursue further studies in regular programs and to be granted steady leave with pay when the occasion arose. The teachers added, and I quote, We want to plead with you, Your Excellency, to see this as a must for the improvement of teaching and learning in Ghana, unquote. For Pan-African Television, Diana Ejei reporting. Old Fadama is known to be one of the trouble spots in the country, especially with the violence that greeted it after the 2008 election. Diana Ejei has more of the story. The police have arrested 14 supporters of the governing New Patriotic Party, MPP, who are allegedly responsible for the violent clash at Old Fadama in Accra on Sunday. The alleged troublemakers were said to have used machete to injure their colleagues in an attempt to take over leadership of the area. The Greater Accra Regional Police Public Relations Officer, ASP, Efia Tej told Joy News, reporter Latif Idrisu on Sunday that the arrest people include 11 men and 3 women. She disclosed that the police command was notified about the clash on Sunday at Agogloshi, a suburb of Accra, and they swiftly removed to arrest the situation. An investigation by Joy News reporter revealed that the most wanted man is Yakubu Alidu, popularly known as Bullet, who is said to be the chief of Takuru in Old Fadama. Three people were sustained very degree of injury after the clash and property world thousands of cities were destroyed. In an interview, Mr. Alidu added that there was nothing violent about what happened and that there was no need for anybody to panic. For Pan-African Television News, Diana Ejei reporting.
The Northern Regional Police Command said it will conduct an intensive operation in the town of Boli to arrest gunmen operating along Ghana's border with Côte d'Ivoire. The illegal gold mining in small towns such as Boli and Dollar Town have attracted formal Ivorian rebels who have mounted checkpoints at some vantage spots to export money from passerby. The PRO of the Northern Regional Police Commander, ASP Ebenezer Tete, said persons in possession of firearms that are not registered are engaging in illegal activities. The police PRO said they would map out a strategy to drive out all persons operating in the community. The reaction of the policemen came on the heels of an investigation conducted concerning the activities of some gunmen operating in the community. The activities of the rebels have become a major concern for the residents who said they are living in fear. One resident said, and I quote, Every blessed day of our lives are always at risk because we don't know what will happen, unquote. Another resident described how dangerous the roads were, adding that even though no one has been shot, sometimes fights occur between the Ivorians and the residents. The police commander said they are ready to bring an end to the activities of the gunmen in order to restore peace to the area. ASP Teta said, the police have conducted large-scale operations before, which have led to the arrest of several persons, including persons who are not Ghanaians. The chairman of the Parliament's Committee on Defence and Interior, Major Retired Derek Odro, expressed worry in an interview. He said rebel activities were a security threat to both Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire because the rebels hold illegal guns and can create a border conflict. He added that the committee would study the situation and call on the appropriate national institutions to address the issue. For Pan-African Television News, Benedicta Isi Apia reporting. The Ghana Police Service has dismissed about 3,000 new recruits for their failure to present accurate documents. The Director of Public Affairs of Ghana Police Service, Superintendent Sefas Atha, confirmed this development on City News, adding that, indeed, some police recruits are going to be sacked from the police school. He also indicated that they are going to verify and investigate the process until only those who are qualified are called for training. Those who were found to have been entered without the basic requirements have been referred to the CID for further investigations. The list of all expelled recruits from various training schools has been submitted to the police headquarters. Presiding Bishop of Perez Chapel International Bishop Charles Ajinasari has noted that frosters, thieves, and robbers have craftily found their way into the church. Preaching to his congregation at the Perez Dome, Joulo in Accra, on Sunday, February 5th, the presiding bishop said there are some who come into the church only to steal. Citing an example to buttress his point, Bishop Ajinasari recounted how a married couple in the Perez Chapel International defrauded him and other church members and later bolted to join a different church. Benedicta Apia has more of the story. He said such frosters normally take advantage of their association with the head pastor to perpetrate their crime. Some of them continually shake hands with the head pastor after church service to create the impression that they are close friends, whilst others use photo opportunities to craft that same impression and subsequently exploit it for nefarious and criminal purposes. He said there was the need for the church to expose such frosters. Thus, his decision to warn his fellow pastors of the fraudulent activities of the foster couple. For Pan-African Television News, Benedicta Isi Apia reporting. President Nana Ekufu Ado has beaten off competition from 2015 French runner Kofi Annan to emerge as the most influential public figure on social media Ghana for 2016. This according to data from Ghana social media rankings spearheaded by Advanced Media, Click Africa and Dream Ambassadors Foundation GH. There's more in this report from Benedicta Apia. The ranking was based on the Global System for Mobile Co-Communication Bureau score. It was analyzed from the social media following. Growth difference, engagements, post-research and mentions. His closest contender, former President John Dramani Mahama, 
who ranked higher in 2015, also gained new followers in 2016, numbering 713,788. While the former UN Secretary General trailed with 359,951 new followers. The list of the influential public figures is packed for 2016 year under review with the President Nana Dodankwa Ikufuado being in the first place followed by former President John Dramani Mahama. In the third place was the former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan followed by the Vice President Dr. Baud Baumia, former Vice President Kwesi Mr. Arthur, former president John Jerry Rollins, and the second lady, Samira Baumia, in that order. In the year under review, President Ekufuado has also gained the highest number of new followers, 935,145, among his competitors, coupled with the highest number of engagements on both Facebook and Twitter. For Pan African Television News, Benedicta Isi Apia reporting. Up next is business with Mavis Adam Kite. A very good morning to you and welcome to Business News on Pan African Television. My name is Mavis Adam Kite. Mining communities have, over the years, suffered from the adverse effects of both legal and illegal mining activities. My colleague Jeanette Norte has more on this story. The General Secretary of the Ghana Mine Workers Union, Mr. Prince William Ankara, has made a fresh case for the government to take urgent steps to ensure that the minerals revenue development is strictly invested in mining. The Chief Executive Officer of the Minerals Commission, Dr. Tony Aubin, also agreed that the fund should be utilized exclusively for the benefit of mining communities. Prince William Ankara said government needs to institute measures that would ensure the community's full benefit from the royalties. As part of efforts to mitigate this, royalties from the soil of the mineral resources are channeled into a fund for developing the communities. Government has reaffirmed plans to double the royalties from 10 to 20 percent. Ghana's progress on consolidating its fiscal deficit since 2015 under an international monetary fund program will have a setback. Janet Norte has reports for Pan African News. According to Moody's, the International Monetary Fund is in talks with Ghana as part of the three-year deal struck in 2015 after spending ballooned and revenue from commodities such as oil and gas plunged due to a global slump. The country will seek to finalize an audit of the undisclosed spending during this discussion with the Washington-based lender by February 15th. The Minister of Finance, Mr. Ken Oforiata, told reporters in Accra on Sunday. Once the financing gap is established, the government will determine how it wants to raise funds for the shortfall, said Ken Oforiata. And that will be all for today's business news on Pan African Television. My name is Mavis Adam Kite. Up next is sports after this break. Please stay tuned. Thank you and welcome back from that quick commercial break. It's still live on the Major News Bulletin on Pan African Television. It's now time for sports. My name is Maxwell William Chigwe. Moving straight into the camp of the Egyptian after the 2017 African Cup of Nations, Avram Grant, who has terminated his post as the head coach of the Ghana Black Stars due to his failure at the 2017 African Cup of Nations, the Egyptian Football Association has given their backing to coach Hector Kupa despite the Pharaoh's loss to the Cameroonian in the 2017 African Cup of Nations finals on Sunday. Egypt were beaten two goals to one by Cameroon in Libreville to miss out on a record extending 8th African Cup of Nations title. While the Pharaohs finished as runners up, Keeper was subject to intense criticism in regards to the team's defense style of play. EFA president Hani Rida has come to the defense of the Argentine manager who secured Egypt's first qualification for the AFCON since 2010 and has put the team in a strong position in their 2018 World Cup qualifying group. Rader said the coach has done his best 
since taking charge of the team and he has helped the team build a new team and that there is no room for talking about ending Cooper's contract. The EFA boss added that Cooper will stay as the head coach because they like what he is doing. President and bank ruler of Inter Allies, Mr. Delali Senai, has revealed that his decision to relocate the team from the Tema Sports Stadium to Elwak Sports Stadium for the upcoming 2016-2017 Premier League season was due primarily to financial considerations. The executive committee member said they moved the team from Tema Sports Stadium to Elwak because of limited fans and Elwak is a good venue since the club is based at La and their fans are also based there. He added that the fans can troop to the stadium in their numbers to watch the team play, adding that the stadium also has some facilities that will be very useful to the team and the fans. One of the club's top players, Isaac Chum, praised management on the decision to move from Tema to Accra. He added that they sometimes encounter difficulties and some players complain of knee injuries while playing on the artificial turf in Tema. Inter Allies will start their league campaign against Accra House of Oak at this season's on weekend. And in our last story, Australia's Tim Cahill has apologized for swearing at a referee after he was bizarrely sent off the pitch before he could enter the game as a substitute in last week's explosive Melbourne Derby. The former Everton forward, now with Melbourne victory, was about to come on as a substitute when he made his comments to the referee following Melbourne victory's controversial winner. Cahill said, and I quote, I sincerely apologize to the referee, Chris Beath, for my reaction, unquote. The 37-year-old Australian all-time record goal scorer said this through his Instagram page. He said he realized that his behavior also hurt the game, so he apologized to the team, Melbourne Victory, and also to all the fans. And that will be all for sports. My name is Maxwell William Chigbe. Back to you, Sadia. Thank you very much, Maxwell, for the sports updates. And that does it for news today. To end the news, a recap of our headlines. Teachers told Ekufu Ado not to forget his promise to them. In business, government must invest minerals revenue in mining communities, says Ghana Mine Workers. And in sports, Australian footballer star Tim Cahill apologizes over bizarre red card. That does it for news today. Many thanks for joining us. My name is Sadia C. It's a beautiful day I'm gonna make most of it It's a beautiful day A day to share with you You'll make my world go round Yeah, yeah, yeah It's really got me saying Nice girl Experience the wide range of top quality and affordable electronics, phones, tablets, home and office appliances from NASCO. NASCO, bring home happiness.
that and uh, I trust that you enjoyed you know the new segment with uh, uh, you know um, Sadia Seydou and her team Mavis Adam Key and Maxwell Wairam Chibi for sports now it's also important that we get to find out what is happening in the world of entertainment so let's cross over and see what's happening in the entertainment industry Good morning, Africa. You are watching us live on Pan-African TV. It is the entertainment segment on the Good Morning Show. My name is Mami Isi Hamon. Let's get interactive on our social media platforms. It is Pan-African TV for Twitter and Instagram, Pan-African Television for Facebook. The name is Abnasi Dua. In our first story, we have Honorable Catherine Atheku. During her vetting, stated that when she becomes the Minister for Tourism, Art and Culture, she will promote Ghanaian trend fashion wise. She stated that she would blend Ghanaian fashion trends with Ghanaian global trends. Wow, that is impressive from Honorable Catherine Afiko. Like the way I'm looking this morning I know, with right? my kente gear and my beautiful outfit. Okay, moving away from that, we have the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards for this year, 2017, which will be held on the 11th of March. And we are, they nominated um, some of the celebrities from South Africa, Nigeria, and Kenya. We had um, our Afro pop star, Yemi Alade. We had um, Funke, the, she was actually the actress for Jennifer. First diary, and we also had um, Trevor Noah and Lupita Nyongo. Yes, Lupita, wow. that's that, a good one there. Yes, that that woman was the actress for 12 years a slave and she actually impressed us she even had an Oscar award for that movie she played a good role in that movie yes. in our last but not the least story we have our beautiful screen goddess Omotola she turns 39 and her daughter turns 17. she posted on her social media platform with a picture of her and the mom saying that yeah happy birthday to us at mommy love you and god continually shine his eyes on you thanks for all of your messages so far friends was kidnapped since yesterday to know you who laugh out loud responding to all oh that is so adorable and in my last story, we have Playhouse.com and Pan-African Television. They are coming up with a hilarious um, stage, um, stage play dubbed in the bag of a woman. This stage is originally by um, Oswald Okaite, and we are actually coming up with this play to ignite the interest of um, stage um, theater and also to educate us more on the Valentine's Day, which is going to be on the 11th of February. Please come in your numbers. The rate is free. Abra. Yes. Tell us something. Tell I them. hope you guys know where we are located. We are located around Abelene Pay, um, around the AMA. Yeah. But um, the landmark is um, Mawako Restaurant. When you get to Mawako Restaurant, you can ask of the Pan-African TV station, and they will direct you towards us. Don't miss this program. Yes, and look gorgeous, because we are going to look gorgeous. Come and let us educate you on it. We are done for today's entertainment news from the studios of Pan-African TV. The name is Abna Sidwa. <laughs> What? Castro. D Black. Mirazi. Sobim. Afide. Yeah, that's so be a man. Jesse. What is it that you're hiding from me? Did I hide anything from you? I used part. Wow. I want to see it. What a heart-breaking use part! Yes, master. So you lied to me. Well, I was lying to no pressure. Precious is my middle name. I am not know. Me na me me te te me te te me te te me na na me te te me te te and I say oh say oh me na na me te te me te te me te te. Good morning, Africa. Stay tuned. Good morning, Africa. Very well. Uh, welcome back from. Uh, very well. Welcome back from that wonderful entertainment news. And uh, in the back of a woman is happening this Saturday. I want you to be here, and I want you to have a good laugh uh, at the premises of Pan-African television. And so make sure that you invite your friend, you invite your colleagues, uh, you invite your partners uh, to come and enjoy themselves here 
uh, at the Insight, uh, well, did I say Insight? At the Pan-African TV premises. <laughs> so it's still Good Morning Africa, and we're live on Pan-African television, truly African. Now, we're going to be talking to, uh, you know, some of your favorite uh, pundits, so or if you like, uh, communicators here on Good Morning Africa. We're going to be talking to uh, Prince Derek Ajay, who is a member of the NDC's communications team, and also Ibrahim Ajay, who is a member of the MPP's communications team. We're going to be looking at, amongst others, um, the uh, story on the front page, the one I, I, I told you earlier was a big story, um, or is a big story. The, U, uh, the fact that UN has warned of threat of terrorism on regional scale in Africa. I'm going to be reading a bit of that for you so that you can get you know, a bigger picture of what the paper is talking about. We're also going to be talk, looking at um, the fact that Nigerian protesters are calling for a change of government. The very people who called for a change of government are now calling for another change of government. Interesting, isn't it? Now, local stories, we're going to be looking at the Ghanaian Times, uh, uh, you know, Tiko Jaba approved by parliament, even though there were a lot of resistance from the minority in parliament. And uh, Ghana drops in 2016 corruption index. Well, is it as a result of uh, the new administration? Or is it something that the previous administration did that um, actually catapulted, if you like, uh, you know, or that actually um, gave way for the new um, uh, drop in, in the corruption index? And we're going to be looking at um, the Chronicles as well. IGP draws his gun and warns public over unlawful seizures. Uh, and so, well, my question really is that, if you recall uh, what happened here yesterday when we we're talking about the seizures and all of that, you, you remember that the uh, gentleman from the NPP intimated clearly, uh, unequivocally, that you know the, the seizures were done in conjunction with the state apparatus, you know, being the police and then the military and all of that. So, if the IGP is coming out to say that, well, you know, the um, public should be warned over unlawful seizures, then it begs the question of whether or not the police uh, is actively involved in, uh, in the collection of these, of these or in the seizures of these properties. And so we're going to be looking at that story as well. But most importantly, let me read um, a bit of what is in the inside newspaper about the uh, US, uh, UN warning of uh, threat of terrorism on a regional scale in Africa. It says, the United Nations says there is a th the threat of terrorism on regional scale, not only by the hit and run attacks of Boko Haram in Nigeria, Chad, Niger, and Cameroon, but also the wider Sahelo-Sahara region. Dr. Mohamed Ibn Chambas, the special representative of the UN Secretary, uh, UN Secretary General for West Africa and the Sahel, said originally militant groups were driven by sentiment of exclusion, marginalization, and disenfranchisement. Uh, citing Mali as a case study, he explained that it would be important to pursue efforts at decentralization in order to maintain a commitment by national stakeholders to the implementation of the peace process. Dr. Ibn Chambas made these remarks uh, in Accra during the unveiling of the head office complex of the West Africa Network for Peace Building, WANEP. The event, which coincided with the launch of a book dubbed Strides and Strains of CSOs in Africa, the WANEP story, was chaired by, the, uh, uh, by Mr. Alan Marcel D'Souza, the ECOWAS Commission president. In attendance were Dr. Sam G. Do, the first executive director of co uh, and co-founder of WANEP and Mr. Emmanuel H. Bombande, the second executive director and co-founder of WANEP. Uh, Dr. Chambers said ECOWAS and WANEP would be in a good position to devise collaborative approaches in addressing these challenges and related issues of peace and security while creating a conducive environment for the mediation and negotiation. He said the ECOWAS would strengthen its collaboration with uh, one up in addressing common threats affecting the sub-region. On a recent event that led, for, uh, that led to former President Yaya Jame of the, uh, of the Strong Rule, Dr. Chambers said, uh, while this was a truly remarkable manifestation of the international community upholding the collective will of the Gambias for genuine democracy, it will be important for civil society organizations such as WANEP uh, to join in the support 
so to join in and support the efforts of ECOWAS, the African Union and the, Union and the UN to accomplish the transition in the Gambia, uh, which will be a long and arduous process that touches on critical issues of national reconciliation and security sector reform. Mr. D'Souza remarked that the wisdom of ECOWAS to formally collaborate with CSOs and in particular WANEP was in line with the ECOWAS um, uh, was in line with the ECOWAS vision of transforming itself from an ECOWAS state uh, to an ECOWAS people. So clearly, I mean, uh, we're looking at some challenges that uh, you know uh, we're going to face in terms of uh, terrorism and uh, the fact that we ought to be extra vigilant in that regard to ensure that uh, you know we protect our borders against the act of terrorism and uh, we're going to be looking at that uh, particular story definitely and that is on the front page of the uh, inside newspaper and like i indicated nigerian protesters call for change of government now you recall that uh, in recent past uh, well not not recent past quite uh, recently we did something on entertainment relative to the fact that uh two faced edibia together with some celebrity friends of his embarked or decided to embark on a nationwide protest against the current uh, administration headed by buhari indeed they opined that the current economic you know, that the country is facing is, uh, is, is, is unpalatable. Indeed, uh, when this administration took over, you know, the, the, the prices of, of fuel, kerosene, amongst others, have increased. And they, they, they explain that, you know, the, the hike in, uh, in the prices of such commodities is as a result of bad governance. And they are calling for the government to sit up to do something that will ameliorate the problems that the country is facing as of now. Now, uh, it appears that the very people who called for that particular change in the political atmosphere uh, of Nigeria are calling for another change in this particular, you know, in, in, in their political dispensation. And so it begs the question as to whether or not they were not sure uh, whether, you know, uh, Buhari was going to live up to expectation, or even if they were sure, you know, they are now beginning to question, uh, you know, Buhari's leadership in that regard. And so uh, we're going to be looking at that. We're going to be looking at uh, it from both angles. You know, Buhari is also saying that, look, I'm going to wipe away all the corruption in the system, which indeed he has started doing so. And uh, people are saying that, well, he's doing very well in that regard. However, okay, it leaves a bigger room for speculations to be made if indeed you are clearing all these uh people you 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 you, you perceive to be corrupt uh, and and you're not using you know that particular space you've created to also create wealth for people then what are you doing then what are you doing and so you know people have genuine concerns about this particular administration and they seek to express same by embarking on a nationwide demonstration even though uh, two Faces campaign dubbed I Stand with Nigeria, or I Stand with Two Baba, or I Stand with Two Face. Uh, you know, didn't see the day of light. Um, it appears that certain persons within certain quarters are, are not going to sit aloof to see the country dwindle. And so they're going to uh, definitely protest. Uh, they're going to embark on a nationwide campaign and they're going to make sure that whatever it is that they need to do to bring about a change of government. They are going to do so. And so we're going to be discussing that particular issue. Uh, you recall that the whole political sphere or the, the whole political atmosphere, uh, you know, uh, or the wind of change, if you like, was blowing across the world. Uh, you know, if you look at what happened uh, in, the, in the U.S. of A, Donald Trump became the president uh, of the uh, of, of United States of America. If you look at what happened in the Gambia, you know, Yaya Jame was kicked out. If you look at Nigeria, obviously, uh, you know, Buhari was brought in. And in Ghana, uh, you know, uh, His Excellency, the former president, was also kicked out by the Ghanaian people. And so it appears that, you know, uh, across the world, people wanted a certain change and they, was they were given that particular change. But as whether or not that change is going to equal the kind of, uh, of, of leadership or the kind of development they are looking for, is another question or it's another matter that ought to be looked at you know with a critical lens uh, devoid of any political uh, speculations and so we're going to be looking at that particular uh, issue as well and uh, 
We're also going to be looking at the fact that Ghana has dropped in 2016 uh, corruption index. And, uh, well, it appears that in Africa we are ninth, in the world we are 70th. <laughs> Whether that is good or not, well, <laughs> I'll leave it in your hands to judge. You know, you the viewers to judge. But uh, you can connect with us, okay, by sending us a WhatsApp to our WhatsApp number 0560742139. 056 We're also live on Facebook, as I indicated, uh, www.facebook.com forward slash Pan African Television. Send us your views, your comments, your thoughts, what have you, to, to our WhatsApp uh, number and our Facebook uh, you know, page, and we'll definitely get to read it for you right here. You can also tweet at us uh, on, uh, on Twitter at Pan African TV, but make sure you hashtag Good Morning Africa, and we're definitely going to be reading them for you. So stick and stay with us. Let me go for a quick breather. When we come back, we'll get to read some of your messages, and we'll get to delve deep into the substantive matters of today. Stick and stay. It is Good Morning Africa with yours truly, Kwame Ousudan. So I'll be right back. Ocean, as a bean seed, or the awo, Jamie been told that Miss Bell, baby, come at some reverend, me, oh, none, or you, my nature, Mosia, or Babes, you are gonna go now, the seven does a switch, young man, this is better in your way. Brother, 
Missing the back of Sao Going to Coco and Nina and show Didi and Korea The ordinary day I know the bank of Gio Now I'm hoping that I remember when I'm Brio The ordinary day I know the bank of Gio So I'm hoping when I'm Brio be a day when she knew and I will call she as Gio If it be too hard for you And you make a quest I brought one on your dim I will cry If it be too hard for you And you make a quest I brought one on your dim I will cry And you ask me to show my dear cause show show In thing I bought you and I bought you and I never made a for show In this life nothing no be easy oh Why you watch my name I will cause show It's your determination and ask your father for protection. The free sir, the ordinary, I know the bank come to you. Now who be not the member when him grew? The ordinary, I know the bank come to you. So who my when him grew be a day and why should he and I will call she as you? If it be too hard for you, you ready? And you make a quest So I'm born on your dim my own cry Papa Mansion Let rest in the town of my kid Come me to fix it at that And you make a quest So I'm born on your dim my own cry เนี่ยเมนยินนะเนี่ยเมียชิเชเปเปเปเนี่ยเรมเรมเรมนะชนะเดเดเดเดเดเดเดเดเดเดเดเดเดเดเดเดเดเดเดเดเดเดเดเด
Oh no, go on to my secret day Secret day Get now with baby fever Oh no, go on to my secret day Secret day No conta o FM, 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 no conta o FM. Girl, I like your style, your walkies. I like your style. I wanna know where you from, aka Jason. I like your style. Take care of the lane, Nana. Get your nan to get your Nana. The quack on me, book and puma. The knock on me, book and puma. Take care of the lane, Nana. Get your nan to get your Nana. The quack on me, book and puma. The knock on me, book and puma. Minjabo, now we'll get our machine. Minjabo, see how you're not big, 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 So uncaden, why be a bone in my head in the dead? More the prison so on your men. Make a dash of men in Palaya, and you win your me, are you? Baby, the baby, the baby, the new tinta. Not that when you're me, I say, Free so be a wire. I be the day so soon, would be poor. Into what they tell them, what will be the only in the insa? Or be so on to. Back from uh, that commercial break. This is Good Morning Africa with me, Kwame Ousida. So, and this is the newspaper review segment. We have uh, with us Prince Derek and Jay, and Now, today we're going to be looking at some very interesting headlines. Uh, but first and foremost, let's start off with the international stories, and then we can end with the local stories. Now, the Insights has has reported. Um, that which was said by the UN in terms of the fact that <coughs> they are warning against the threat of terrorism on regional scale in Africa. Um, 
you know, we, we've seen the likes <coughs> of Boko Haram in, uh, in, in Nigeria, you know, the, the, the threats in, uh, in Niger, um, Cameroon, etc., etc., etc. Al Shabaab and all those things. Yeah. So, uh, what, what would be your take on this? Do you think that Ghana is sitting on a certain tenter hooks? Um, good morning. Yes. Kwame, yes. To my brother and friend, uh, Prince Derek J and our viewers on Pan Africa TV as well. Very good morning to everybody. Ghana, Are you guys related? <coughs> <by you>? No. <coughs> okay. He's my son. <laughs> we, we, we adopted him. <laughs> I'm from La. He's from Teshi. Okay. And the Teshi people are technically our yeah, children. Yeah. So that okay. is correct. Yeah, yeah. There were two brothers, Ajay and Soa, mm. from La. There was a, some conflict or something back in, in time in Memorial. And one, was it Soa? I think Soa left La and set up his family branch in what is now Teshi. So every indigenous Teshi. Uh, is, is a La person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm Please, La. Mm, go ahead. Yeah. Um, okay, so Ghana needs to be, I think, alert, Kwame. And we shouldn't take these, and when they're coming from august bodies such as the UN and you're having regional security or, or continental security um, personnel giving us these warnings uh, or admonitions, I think it's important, not just because of Ghana, but for the wider West Africa and the continent. You know, the adage, um, my brother's keeper comes to me <coughs> and we need to do that. It was only, what, two years ago, we saw what happened, I've forgotten that, about the beach resort name, in mm. La Côte d'Ivoire. Yeah, La Côte d'Ivoire, yeah. What happened there? <coughs> yeah. uh, it was terrible. See, yes. Kenya, see. what happened to yes. our own uh, Awuno? Mali as well, mm. I believe, mm. in a hotel. Yeah. You had the, I think, the uh, part of Al-Qaeda coming there. And, of course, our big brothers, Nigeria, yeah. have been battling with <coughs> this Boko Haram <coughs> thing. And we shouldn't think that we are somehow cocooned um, we have a responsibility, I think, to uh, make sure that we add value to the security measures that are in place, mm. both within West Africa and the continent wide. Uh, and terrorism is a thing that I think that when we as a body, when the citizens of Africa come together to say that we're with one voice and with one dedicated purpose, help to eradicate uh, this uh, menace. Uh, I can't quite find the superlatives, mm. but these are just evil people mm. out to do nothing than have their own agenda mm. uh, and, and attach uh, mm. our religion next to it, mm. uh, which is a, 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 something that for us as Muslims mm. especially, <clears throat> is something that is, is unpalatable. Yeah. But what we need to do is to come together uh, and, and really make sure that there is no room uh, or footprint on this continent of Africa, and indeed worldwide, for the likes of ISIS, Al Qaeda, Al Shabaab, and, and any other terrorist grouping. Um, because it affects so much more. I mean, we mm -hmm. have so many challenges <coughs> in, in Africa, educationally, uh, you know, social intervention policies that not everybody is able to, mm -hmm. to benefit from. Let alone having this, you know, this menace of terrorism coming to somehow destabilize mm -hmm. the economic gains that Africa is making. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you look at our trajectory, post 1980s our continent wise we are in the on the right path mm. we don't need this kind of thing to come and now remove all the gains that we've made so it's important I, that we pay I attention. mean my, my fear really is that part of the qualifying triggers if you like for um, Boko Haram's oppression op op operations was the fact that they, they considered themselves as being mar marginalized and um, the fact that they also said that some governments were not doing their things right and the issue of oil and blah blah so in the case of nigeria the issue of oil and borders and all of that now it appears it has moved beyond that is it not a cause for worry really because now if you're saying if if it's not about marginalization again if it's not about religion again then what is it about what are they really fighting about well let's not confuse boko Haram with mend now mend was the um i forgot the name something for the niger delta now, they were the ones who were actually fighting for the oil. And they were those who would hijack people from Shell and BP, British Petroleum, in order, because they were saying that they would be marginalized by the Obasanjo regime. No, I think one of the reasons that was cited in the paper, because mm. I've read it, is, yeah. is the issue of marginalization. Yeah. You know, they said they were marginalized, for which reason they felt they needed to protect themselves. Mm. Now, the issue of marginalization is, if you like, relegated to the back. Yeah. But then I, I still don't fathom why. But I'm, I'm coming mm. to that. Mm. Because later on, you know, in order to justify what they're doing, they take on different causes. Okay. But initially, it was Boko Haram. Now, Haram means what? Haram means something that is not legal. Legal. Mm. Uh, halal is legal and Haram is illegal. And they say Boko 
Now, boko means Western education. Do you get me? Like we say, abrochi. Mm. When we say abrochi, we know what we're talking about. Outside of the shores of Ghana, specifically Europe or the Western world. So there's <coughs> boko, which in that word means Western education. Such a short word for a, a big meaning. <laughs> Western education is a haram. So that's what they were going through. They went through that channel of saying that we want to create a Sharia state. And that's where you had the problems with the Joss. Remember, you yeah. had Christians yeah. and Muslims, Muslims and clashing. clashing. Mm. And oftentimes, you would find that it wasn't to do with religion. There'd be personal or community uh, conflict, and it would attach religion to it. Do you get me? Uh -huh. So that's where the genesis was about Western education. They went to the Sharia state. As we saw that they, there was no, um, let's say, currency for that particular demand. Because you have the majority of uh, Nigerians who are indeed Muslim. I'm talking about Yoruba land, Hausa land, and of course you have Igbo land as well, which are mainly Christian. Mm. So no, we don't <coughs> buy into this Sharia state. We are one body, Nigerians, and we'll continue to live in harmony, whereby we have that, um, that um, religious space to cohabitate mm. and, and worship. If you go to Abuja, Kwame, on one side, uh, on the main thoroughfare in Abuja, you have the uh, federal church, and then you have the federal mosque, side by side. Look me, I watch you. And there's such harmony. I prayed in the mosque in Abuja. And it's funded by the state, likewise with the church. Mm. That is a beauty. And something that we don't see if you're not a frequent visitor to Nigeria, that we understand and respect both religions within Nigeria. Mm. But of course, you cannot legislate for every single person in your community. And when you have these uh, uh, miscreants, mm. such as uh, uh, one, uh, the Boko Haram, mm. trying to attach. Mm. And then they see that, hold on, we thought we'd get some traction here. Mm. The overwhelming majority of Muslims are saying, no, we don't, we don't, we don't subscribe to your line of thought. Right. So then what do they do? Then they add on economic, we'll be marginalized. Mm. You see how they, they, they change the goalposts from Western education, want to be Sharia state, now we're being marginalized. Mm. But, they, but you find that the people in Maiduguri, Bono State, who are in that same economic space, don't feel that they're being marginalized per se. Clearly. No, you know, yes, they need more development in those areas, mm. but not to the point that we're being marginalized in, in that sense. The Niger Delta, though, is different, mm. whereby they said that we are the state producing the oil, mm. yet look at our region, um, where, where we're not seeing anything. I'm talking about Abia State, uh, Niger Delta State, Three Rivers State. These are all mm. Igbo uh, areas. But the main world was Niger Delta. And mm. we had that uh, case of um, hijacking and what have you. Mm. Um, and then what Obasanjo did, and then Yadua did the same. And then later, uh, good luck, Jonathan, mm. they paid uh, the, the, the rebels, so to speak. There was this amnesty. Bring your weapons and we will at least... Uh, they weren't giving them jobs, but they were finding ways to subdue them by giving them money, then, which then trickled down to the communities and what have you. Um, so that's the situation. Very there. well. Prince Derek Ajay, um, the abduction of, uh, you know, these, the, the ladies in Nigeria uh, sprang a certain discussion across the world. Um, and you realize that, you know, it became like a, a global phenomenon. Like a lot of attention now was, 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 was on Nigeria in respect of this particular issue. It appears that uh, some years down the lane, we've not been able to eradicate, you know, the menace, so to speak. Of, of, of ter terrorists um, across Africa. Do you think that it, it, it poses a certain danger, even for Ghana um, as a country? Well, good morning. And I, I want to commend you first for your sense of nationalism. I see the <laughs> coat of arms on your Thank chest, you. uh, <laughs> on top of your nice African print. Thank you. Uh, I would encourage you to uh, show him to uh, your designer, so he would move from the western <laughs> from the book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so now, <laughs> okay, so to, now to well, he's a book now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that yeah. yeah, your namesake, yeah, okay, is a legends mm -hmm. in yeah. uh, just near Metro TV, okay, Ghanaian made, okay. What I'm wearing. It's Ghanaian made. Ghanaian made. Solid. But yeah. you know, anyway. No, but it's still, still <laughs> but, it, but still Boko, you know. <laughs> <It's> still <Western. laughs> Anyway, this is Pan African TV, and uh, it's a further endorsement for the Pan Africanism that you're portraying. And uh, I think that um, I within the context of him even using Ghanaian resources, I think I'll at least give him a 50% mark on that. Thank one. you, sir. <laughs> yeah, um, on the global threats. 
and the terrorism thing, and then narrowing it down to the subregion as in West Africa, and therefore the Nigerian example that mm. you gave. I think my brother has uh, done justice to some of the details, and I would not want to spend too much time on it. Mm. But it's a real, you know, threat. Um, one of the days where um, you have an Arab-looking person appear on the news as having hijacked a plane heading towards Tel Aviv or some Israelis, you know, have been, you know, caught in Munich because of Olympic Games and so on. Now, the thing has spread beyond just, you know, an Arab-Israeli kind of thing to a, a certain global phenomenon that has some economics also tied to it because um, some of the wars that have been fought over time, particularly uh, by the, you know, spearheaded by the U.S. and to some extent the U.K. and the Allies, has had economics at the back of it. Even as far back as the world wars. Mm. I mean, if you look at the division of Africa, the partitioning, it was done with a certain mindset, which de defeated the core objectives of humanity in itself. Mm. We are first and foremost human beings. And so for any person to second rate another, I mean, if you look at the slave trade and how even America still looks within itself, I mean, the blacks see themselves still marginalized. Mm. So marginalization <coughs> is a very key, you know, denominator in all of these things. Anything that is unjust, that beats, you know, uh, in its wake violence, until the justice is served, would continue generations upon generations. And so, I mean, you can trace some of these things to biblical days. And I'm saying that for as long as this thing has been there, it means that the fundamentals have not been removed. If you look at what has been happening with Trump and the kind of movements that are forming, it shows the schisms within even just America mm. and just decisions that are being taken by one person or a government. Now, if you take it to the global stage, and I used America and um, UK because I was trying to narrow it down to Bush and Blair and the difficulties that they've imposed on the world post their regimes. The, the global situation has also been unfair to Africa within the context of dealing with miscreants. If you look at Charles Taylor and other uh, leaders, including even, uh, uh, the Kenyan president, who at some point was being forced to uh, the ICC. Mm -hmm. If you look at the uh, uh, um, Sudanese uh, president, okay, mm. and the attempts that were being made to bring him, quote unquote, to justice. That, yeah. If you look at the kind of justice that was served on Gaddafi, and other African leaders. If you look at the destabilization of Africa post the Arab Spring, mm -hmm. and then you take it into what the UK and America has done to Iraq, for example. Bush and Blair, what has happened to them? They're working free. Blair is giving lectures and making money. Bush is holidaying somewhere in uh, Texas. Is that what is happening in Africa? Look, take it to very recent times and look at what uh, threats were being leveled at the doorstep of uh, Yaya Jame. And every time an African head of state stays in power for long, no matter what the issues are, because in the case of Zimbabwe, for example, mm -hmm. some see him as a freedom fighter. Mm -hmm. But what has the UK done to the economy of uh, 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 Zimbabwe? The economics of it is also key in that sometimes they do not use weapons of mass destruction. Sometimes they use economics to und undermine and destabilize a people. But it breeds in its wake a very dissatisfied people people who have an ingrained hatred for those who are the perpetrators. And so if there's some indoctrination, it doesn't matter whether it's religious or otherwise, a whole nation could be indoctrinated along those lines. Generations, like why are we suffering? Or they say it's because of a certain sentiment. So you have a certain hatred for, let's say, the lighter skinned person, white people, because of maybe apartheid. I, I, are you with me? Certainly. So it is not a strict religious thing it is not strictly an economic thing it is there should be a reason there should be a causative reason and it can vary or it could be a multiplicity of all in one so we should not just go in looking at just one issue and then again there's the issue of peacekeeping and the role of nation states in these we have responsibilities towards uh, the world um, and as far as we've ratified various charters as ghana for example the united nations charter and etc etc including the ECOMOC force and so on so we have a responsibility towards you know uh, contributing troops where i would have a difficulty and particularly uh, in contemporary times with this administration is the deployment without prior consultation and there's a need for consultation because you need other wisdoms and so you need for example a security council to be in place you need a, a, a council of state to be in place and other bodies 
which are advisory in nature, which will look at the full gamut of reasons why or why not, and therefore to advise the president. And then upon which basis you then take the next step of even committing troops or even one soldier. It's not just about the life of that soldier, but the repercussions on that action that can be meted out to Ghana. Say, for example, there are countries that have gone to various theaters, and then terrorists have therefore subsequently targeted those countries. If you recall, Germany and others were banned in Japan after the world wars, were banned from you know, moving troops and so on. These things are now changing. Now, recently, I mean, uh, there was some targeting of these, some of these countries mm. because of the Iraqi war and so on. Today, they are not even <coughs> flying planes into buildings anymore because it's a little bit more complicated. You need to train to be a pilot. But nearly anybody can drive a truck mm. or a car. So they're now using trucks to mow down people. And it's as effective as any other weapon. Because, I mean, what are you going to do? Ban people from driving? Mm. So we've moved away from the regular warfare situation to guerrilla and now to a new area. Then there's a role of the internet also in terms of the indoctrination. Certainly. certainly. So you can do all manner of things. And fortunately for us in Ghana, we have, or at least this current administration has inherited a great deal of assets from the previous. Okay. Nearly every uh, uh, intersection has cameras, security cameras. Mm -hmm. And these are not toys. They work. In fact, I was in Sudan some time ago. They have it every junction. Every major traffic light has it. In Ghana, we have the same thing now. And you have special phones that the security services have. You can dial into this and see what is going. So there's a lot of money, uh, monitoring that is going on. Like a big barrel house kind of situation. That's what we have. And that in the UK, is the same. Because yeah, of, yeah, exactly. A lot, actually. <laughs> so we have come a long way as a country in terms of being on top of the security situation. So nobody out there should be afraid. Ghana is secure. But the decisions that we take, and I'm hearing again that we've just, I think yesterday, that we deployed another set of troops. Yeah, to I, I think I heard that as well. My goodness, what is going mm. on here? Mm. No, you see, honestly, I think we must advise the president, mm. and I want to use this opportunity. Don't endanger Ghanaians. You see, he went to uh, uh, the Gambia recently, committed troops without consulting the security uh, council, which is not in place, without consulting, even without even notifying parliament. Mm. And I, I remember saying here, when we were discussing the Gambia situation, that we do, should not wake up tomorrow to find out that we are at war with Trump because now Trump says he's going to revoke other things that have Africa in it. Um, the, um, what do you call it, Agua is at risk. Mm -hmm. The Millennium Compact is at risk. There are mm -hmm. several interventions that will benefit Africa, including Ghana, which are potentially at risk, just like he's done to, you know, uh, the Mexicans and so on. If Trump was to one day make one of those executive orders and sign, and show it to the TV cameras. Is President Kufado going to move troops to the U.S. Mm. or the U.S. Embassy? Or is going to kidnap somebody? I think that we should get serious in the governance style that we are adopting. Because these are the things that threaten us as a nation. And terrorism of all sorts must be abhorred, including nation-state terrorism. And so, to some extent, sometimes America in itself as a government under Trump behaves and acts almost like a rogue state, almost like a terror, ter it's terrorizing people, mm. you know, and creating a certain situation where it can have the same thing being transported back to America. Because where you target, let say, seven countries and affect them, and they also now decide that, okay, we are also going to show you that we can do this. There are ways of doing things. I mean, you can do the same thing, achieve the effect that you want without necessarily antagonizing people unnecessarily. Mm. America maybe can afford to do that because maybe they have, you know, the, the much more systems mm -hmm. and uh, structures that support or can fight or quick response to, and they have even emergency services, they have the medical, in fact, even Ghana, we do have that now. I mean, if you go to the state of art facilities that we've bequeathed to this administration, that does not also mean that because we have a state of the art facility at RAGE, at university, the university hospital and so on, so get reckless and have casualties on our hands. Does it mean that? What it means is that still take decisions that would not endear us negatively <laughs> to the terrorists out there. If you look at the Boko Haram situation, initially it was contained within Nigeria. And then you, you talked about the, uh, um, the, the girls from... Uh, uh, Boko, uh, the, um, the, she, the, the, uh, those ones that were abducted? Abducted, yes. Yeah. Now, the Chibok girls. Yeah. Now, you realize that the Nigerian army managed to push them a little further towards the uh, border with Cameroon and so on. Then, now they, they, they started working within three countries instead of now concentrating in Nigeria. Mm. Because other countries also came in to try and help flash them. Mm. So as you get involved, know that they also will want to get involved in destabilizing you, to weaken you, 
and give you problems at home. Mm. Get your, you know, uh, 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 um, citizens mm. to be wary of your involvement in the fight against Boko Haram. Mm. And much the same way, now they are collaborating. So you find out Boko Haram, for example, would say that it's pledging allegiance to, let's say, uh, um, Al Qaeda. Al, Sh Al Shabaab or Al Qaeda. No, Al Qaeda. Mm. Yeah. The expectation is that these are bigger bodies that have global reach and are feared. Mm. So if they commit a little resource to your, their fight, whether directly or indirectly, they can you know, be a bigger menace. Mm. And then again, they are also coalescing all the other terrorist groups. So they now can say that, okay, we're going to work in concert with Al Shabaab. And so they have a bigger you know, footprint by the stroke of a pen, by mm. saying that they are you know, pledging allegiance. Mm. They straight away control more territory because then the, it's fluid. Our borders are a little porous. They can move from place to place. Very well. Their tactics are not you know, conventional. So Very it well. could be anybody. All they right. are really using children and women. Right. You know, so right. I think that we should be careful. What's up, number is 0560742139. 0560742139. Send your views and comments uh, coming in and we'll definitely... Read. Let's look at the other African story and then we'll move in straight into the Ghanaian stories. And this is particularly of great interest to me because of um, what has just happened uh, happened in the uh, in Nigeria, for instance. Two-Face CDB had decided to embark on a certain campaign and it was shot in the leg uh, by this you know, current Nigerian administration headed by Buhari. Indeed, they expressed a certain distaste in respect of how their economy has, you know, how the economy has taken a nosedive, you know, and um, they decided to gather at the, uh, you know, at the uh, stadium at Surulere to express their dissatisfaction with the way the government is handling issues. They made the point, really, that they are not happy about the uh, price increment, for instance, in, in, in kerosene, petrol, etc., etc., etc. Did you say, buy did you say petrol? Fuel, petrol, fuel. No, I mean, I yeah, mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then the, 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 the price of Gary and all of that, in their own estimation, has increased, you know. And that is not what they bargained for. Indeed, you recall that in 2014, Buhari himself, together with some other persons, embarked on a nationwide campaign to, uh, if you like, challenge, you know, how the, that the then administration was handling issues in respect of these same uh, matters. Now, the, the, tables, the, table, the tables have turned, and um, these persons are not happy, you know, with the way the, the, the current administration is handling uh, matters. And they want to now call for a change. Do you think yeah. that... When you say they... The I mean, the demonstrators. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they are Nigerians. Yeah, 170 no. million Nigerians. The, yeah, mean, but, yeah, but yeah, the demonstrators. But you see, the thing is that it was not... And, and I've been following it for some time. And it was not just the musicians alone. Sure. You know, f yeah. indeed... Two-Face came when I stand with Nigeria, mm -hmm. and it, it gained a lot of support across board. And people were going to demonstrate within their own, uh, if you like, states, sure. you know, in Nigeria. So it is a huge, it was a huge, or it is a, a huge movement, movement yes. Okay. Now, these protesters are calling for a change of government mm -hmm. because they are not happy with the way Buhari is handling their issue. Do you think mm -hmm. that that change that they are, seeking, they are seeking for is legitimate? He who wears a shoe knows where it pinches. So the, the legitimacy, <laughs> the legitimacy is there. And, right. see, and I'm asking this thing against the backdrop that across the political space in the world, yeah. we saw a lot of change. You know, we've seen board. across board. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe. Now they are now now they called for they called for a change. Now they are calling for another change. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and to answer your question, Kwame, yeah. that legitimacy is within their right to do so, and that's why we're in a democracy. It's where you find despots wanting to suffocate the oxygen of freedom and liberty, that you need a revolution. Um, but it's their right to call for change. And that, that kind of dialogue, uh, that, uh, that, that space where Nigerians can boldly come and demonstrate. Uh, <coughs> and what I was unhappy was with how the uh, federal government was citing security concerns. Yeah, yeah. And managed to dampen down yeah, the demonstrations to the point that only 400 or so Turn up on and the even day. that was not for the I stand with uh, yeah. Nigeria, you know, campaign. Yes. Indeed, Two Face Libya came out to say that, uh, you know, because of security reasons, I can't. We cannot go out to protest because pro Buhari yeah. uh, 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 protesters also decided to come yeah. out to say that yes, we like this government, yeah. you know, and they were. I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. and that is within the rights of the pro Buhari protesters Certainly. as well. But Certainly. definitely, that's where the federal government needed to come in and give that space whereby pro and anti-government can do their, their marches. 
I remember when Let My Vote Count Alliance uh, were going on our demonstration, you had people from the NDC, or, or let's say supporters of the NDC and members of the NDC doing counter walks and what have you. They said they were going on a keep fit walk and what have you. But we, we allowed for that space. I'm talking uh, Ghana. Um, but we'll get, I'll touch on that in a minute because it's not as sanitized as I presented. We know a lot of um, bad things happened under President John Dramani Mahama when it comes to demonstrations. But we'll, we'll get there in a minute. Let's stick with Nigeria. Um, what the legitimacy is correct, but look at it into context. 2009, what was the exchange rate of the Naira to the dollar? Mm. It was 150. When uh, President Buhari came in, on the tail end of the collapse of the oil market, to the point it went down to $27 a barrel, from a high of around 147 in 2008 per barrel, it crashed down to $27. Now it's around the 50, 60 uh, mark again. Why am I bringing this into the fray? Are Nigerians going to say that Buhari collapsed the economy because of policy interventions? No. They are 90 or 95 percent dependent on oil revenue. That's Nigeria. So when oil goes south, all your budget predictions go south as well. Because you said that we project we'll have, I don't know, 20 trillion naira in a budget. Because you know that the price of oil is $160 per barrel. It was actually, yeah, one, uh, went up to, yeah, 160 thereabouts. I'm talking the, end, the tail end of good luck, Jonathan, okay? Because uh, it was in 2015 when uh, February 14th, was the election, Valentine's mm. Day, mm. 2015. Good luck saw that he's losing. He cited security concerns. They extended the election by another six weeks. That's INEC, mm. you, uh, Internet, is it? Independent Nigerian mm. Electoral Commission, by six weeks to April the 1st, mm. April Fool's Day. And the people say, we know, <laughs> we're not fools. We're still, <laughs> we're still kicking you out. I'm giving you some, some, some antecedents yeah. that the oil price crashed at the tail end of Good Luck Jonathan. So Buhari came to in inherit an economy which, let's say, budget-wise, based on world oil prices, Kwame, was around 50 trillion naira. And then suddenly you come in and now that same economy is now worth 10 trillion naira. How do you now account for the 40 trillion naira shortfall? Because we said we will give 5 trillion naira to education, health, and so on and so forth. Suddenly you cannot do that. Is that Buhari's fault? The answer is no. Now, what President Buhari needs to do mm. is to take the conversation whereby Nigerians can understand mm. that it's not because of government policy, but rather because we are, I'm going to say we, Nigeria are oil dependent. If oil is $1 a barrel today, Nigeria's economy is going south together with Saudi Arabia, uh, together with um, um, uh, North Sea Oil in the UK and, and mm. so on and so forth. Oh, and likewise, Ghana as well. Mm. But we, Ghana, we are net importer of oil. We are not a net exporter. So we actually import more than we export. It will still affect us, but not to that same degree. We are not oil dependent now. Mm. And so it's important, which is why President Akufuado has made it clear that we are going to create the most business-friendly, people-friendly economy in West mm. Africa mm. by making sure that we have a diverse economy mm. that actually attracts investment. And then we're going to also create wealth. You know, having a job is one thing, but creating wealth is a whole different ballgame. Mm. And that's the vision of President Nanado Dankwa Kufuado. Yesterday we saw um, my good friend, uh, Honorable Ibrahim Awal, being vetted, the Minister for Business Development. And you're looking about how we can actually, you know, create wealth rather than create loot and share mm. amongst our own people. I'm talking NDC, of course. Very and well. so that's the space that Buhari needs to do, Kwame. Mm. He needs to, it's about communication. Let Nigerians know. This is what we inherited. Not necessarily from Bo, uh, Good Luck Jonathan. Mm. World prices went down. Now we cannot meet those same budget commitments. Mm. And so what happens? This is where now they have to, as they say, uh, lace up their bootstraps mm. and find innovative ways to actually make sure that they own and diversify the Nigerian economy. Right. This is what they need to do. And when they do that, suddenly you see that the price of Gary will go down. And power is a key problem. I know that uh, Aliko Dangote, they in instituted the new oil refinery. It's $500 million, uh, no, $1.2 billion, the oil refinery that they're doing, mm. uh, just outside of Kano, I believe, mm. um, being funded by him. I'm talking uh, Dangote together with public support, but mm. it's mainly the Dangote group uh, mm. who are actually financing that oil refinery. Why am I putting that into this, my submission? When Nigeria gets its energy 
policy and commitments right. Mm. When energy goes down, what happens? The cost of production goes down. How, is, how do we get Gary? You said the price of Gary went up. Well, how do we? Mm. We are all Africans. It's cassava. Mm -hmm. You grate the cassava. You, you get me? It's mm. boiled, um, which is energy. And then it's dried and milled before we get the Gary. Mm. That's the process. So there's an energy component in producing Gary. Now, mm. if your cost of energy is this high, mm. suddenly the Gary too will, the price of Gary will reflect. And Nigeria has to cure that cancer of energy. And when they do that, I mean, oil rich nation, I mean, you're having, what is it, three hours of uh, electricity. But per which day. is why they voted for Buhari to cure, sure. to cure those things. But then th th this is a boomerang, the, as they call it, the. Um, not lying red. Way, as in lying your way to power, kind of, yes. No, you don't lie your way to power. You, the, the truth was told. And then good luck, Jonathan, was kicked out. The PDP. I, I, I mean... No, the PDP. I mean, yeah. the umbrella, they're, they're simple as the umbrella. They share it with the uh, NDC. All they do is cover, <laughs> yeah, just to cover all the, the, the create loot and share that they've been doing. Okay. What happened? Over seven... No, let me get my figure right. Uh, $5.8 billion mm -hmm. that Nigerians under PDP, mm. they share the same, you know, uh, political DNA with NDC. Um, has been recovered. Five point uh, five billion. I'm sure the figure is more. The last time I read, it's, it's online. That Nigerians under the erstwhile corrupt PDP umbrella holding symbol carrying administration of bad luck. Good at uh, Jonathan. I'm not being disrespectful, but the Nigerians call him bad luck. I know we have uh, viewers in Nigeria watching, but I'm just you speaking to an emotion here. No, he's being uh, otikoish. <laughs> <laughs> so the important thing is this. Mm -hmm. $5.5 billion has been mm -hmm. recovered so far. Right. So, I'm, I mean, the, the, no, I'm, I'm saying that mm -hmm. if you say to me, yeah. and it's a legitimate question, Kwame, that this is not the change Nigerians voted for. Mm. They voted for uh, a, a better Nigeria. A better Nigeria. He, and and, and the, they will get it. The, the, I'm the, highlighting the, the five point, I'm coming, sir. Yeah. I'm highlighting the $5.5 billion just to communicate just how much Nigerians have been uh, shortchanged by the erstwhile corrupt but you see now uh, you hear now you hear good luck jonathan you, regime that now it appears that those people who called for the chain right i mean like they cited reasons the, the very reasons that you've cited here but it appears that it is now even worse than before so even if the 5.5 billion that you're talking about was recouped right so it has still not translated into the betterment of the economy i, I agree with you yeah so I mean, so that, then what's the point that, that's why i'm saying that what nigeria needs to do mm. Within this short term, because they're having elections in 2019, I'm talking Nigeria. Yeah. What they need to do is, one, you need to carry people with you. When people can understand the reasons why they are where they are, and you have that dialogue, that conversation with them, and they can appreciate. And Nigerians, in so many, much, many ways, are just like us. When, we are, when the situation explained, we agree. It's just that Nigerians have more vim than Ghanaians. That one, we shouldn't... Uh, and Ghana will say, Kagba, Kada. don't debate. Nigerians have more vim when it comes to how to make a good, bad situation good. And that, that's where we depart in terms of the, the effervescence that they have as a, as a body of people. But we share so much in common with them that if President Buhari explains the situation and beyond the explanation, puts strong interventions. I mentioned about the oil refinery because what that will do is help to um, make sure that Nigeria has more control mm. over its main human uh, its main natural resource mm. it brings prices down you can then fire up the thermal plants um and and, and power production that dangote as a private citizen is doing mm. partner with them so beyond the talking kwami you actually start working to uh, infuse energy within the economy mm. which mm. then translates what uh, uh, trickles down to the, the the public and once people can actually see that prices are stable and then are going down uh, the cost of production is, is r r uh, low when that happens people can employ more because now they can be more competitive and talking mm. nigerian business mm. so these are the the, the two twin engines mm. that buhari needs to do have that conversation i don't think they've had that yet uh, i often go to the uh, this day newspaper uh, is which is online yeah you, know, you need to explain you know before the doctor comes and, and operates mm. he speaks with you yeah. And he assures you, mm. oh, Kwame, this is what we're going to do. And we're going to prove this procedure so when we finish it well. Mm. Because it's like boxing. You know, you can, you can defeat your opponent before you even enter the ring. Okay. Likewise, when it comes to medicine, 
You should be you, wrapping you, up. You, you, yeah, you can heal your, your, your patient even mm. before. Okay. Yeah, okay. So you sensitize the people, that doctor-patient relationship. This is the problem that we have with you, Nigeria, your body. And we are going to put these things in place. And when we do it and apply it, initially you'll feel a twinge, but later it will heal and you'll be stronger than before. They need to have that dialogue. Yeah, uh, uh, yes, dialogue. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. And then beyond that, work to the conversation. Get energy right. And then make sure that, again, certain uh, leakages in the economy. Because the, the, the legacy of corruption under the PDP is still with Nigeria. They haven't exercised that cancer. They have not exercised. Tafa Baleo, $12 billion. It was police com commissioner under mm. PDP. Mm. Twelve billion. I mean, I, I mean, when Nigeria is stealing money, it, it's it's gargantuan. Ghana here, we're talking about well, you me 50, 50 million. And fifty one. Mm. Fifty one million. Mm. Mm? Ghana, mm. Uh, Ghana, dollars. Ghana city. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, you're talking twelve billion. Tafa I mean, when they steal, they steal. <laughs> and that cancer, and that's the legacy of PDP, the umbrella people, like my brother here in the NDC. Mm. When they steal, they steal. And so let's not think that that five billion we can shout hallelujah. Very There's well. still some remnants, huge mm. amounts of remnants that Buhari needs to go in, cauterize, sanitize, and and get uh, public expenditure, the leakages right. Mm. When they do that, they have more money to invest in the economy mm. and, and get people back to work. Very well, Prince Eric J. You've heard him. Um, there's one very interesting um, thing here that was. I think that featured at the, at the demonstration uh, that was held. And they, 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 they say that Alumo is, was, was 200 Naira and now it's 600 Naira. Ogidiga was 250 Naira, now it's 900 Naira. Right, right. No, no. I don't know if it's, if it's Tank or Stunk, but it was 50 Naira, and now it's 600 Naira. Igbo is, was 60 Naira, now it's 700 Naira. Olosho was... Uh, was oh was 500 naira now it's 4500 naira essentially price pure water was five naira now it's 20 naira shop renting of a shop was 3000 naira now it's 6000 naira essentially the prices have gone up um tripled up, some double some tripled yeah. um it's interesting listening to our talking government uh looks like we've gotten ourselves a talking government and i think you need to start timing uh Ibrahim, so that he'll make a conscious effort to talk less and act more. <laughs> um, his boss, instead of working, has been doing a lot of propaganda talking. And I can see that he's, he's um, being at the vice president's office now is kind of rubbing r wrongly on him. He's now talking a lot of propaganda too, uh, even in the Nigerian context. He's shouting after his boss. His boss says seven billion is lost in the this in the Ghanaian economy. He's talking billions lost in Nigeria and contrasting. You recall when um, Buhari won, MPP was on the rooftops that a 72-year-old has won, a 72-year-old would win. Now he stood, stood in that campaign mode, and like his boss in the campaign mode, they are caught up in that campaign mode. He's talking about umbrella people and so on. We are talking about serious issues here. Prices of goods have gone up. And strangely, now we are being told that Gary prices are affected by electricity. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And that, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, fewer prices affect Gary. And that uh, a, a refinery that will be built in Nigeria will bring Gary prices down. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That is the solution that MPP has. So if prices of Gary goes up in Ghana, mm -hmm. Ghanaians expect that a refinery will be built in Ghana to bring Gary prices down. That is the government of Ghana today. That kind of analysis that they're having for us on TV today. Before a global audience. What a joke. A big joke. Now, the government of Ghana, through the spokesperson for the Vice President, Ibrahim Ajay here, is saying to us that Senchi... spokesperson. Get it right. Okay, soon to be spokesperson. No, you're doing a fine job. You are actually casting you know, this mode. You just... You, let's take no, the no, 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 no. I'm no, taking faith, a, no, faith, no, no. Faith is good. Faith is good. It's, no, important, no, no. it's important to get it right. Okay. Um, don't You're representing the MPP. That's right. The, what, the elephant people? Yes, the elephant people. Okay, the fine. elephant people. However the you elephant want to people. describe yourself. I the want elephant to, people. I want to describe you as a ruling government. And I want your statements to be taken very seriously. Like 
I would want the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana statements to be taken seriously. We don't want anyone to just make loose talk As and they are. Away. And no, 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 I know we'll talk about no, concern no, no, in a minute. No, 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 yes. No, yeah, we'll talk about concern. Yes. No problem. Yes. Last week you were on this please, program please, saying he's lying. Uh, don't worry. Now the company said and that we have we had, received eight or nine million dollars. Oh, but it's important. Yes. Uninterrupted when you go off tangent, I have to. No, we had you. an uninterrupted but twenty minutes you. of it helps you. lots of talk, hollow talk. I allowed you that. Let's now please there. grant me. Now you Continue. see, don't be a talking government. Now I'm mm. saying to you that you see. You are drawing some parallels between Nigeria still and Ghana because every time you go and you see the umbrella people and they looted and who looted what? When you talk of looting and lands and looting, it's the MPP that everybody knows. But for me, that is not the important thing here. We are discussing problems in Nigeria. Yes, you can draw contrasts. For example, you said that they need to talk, they need to have an economic dialogue. I agree with you. In fact, that is what the NDC believes in. That's why we had Senchi. Now, what was the response of MPP to Senchi? Mm. They refused to attend. In fact, they rubbished it so bad. No, but he, it was a rubber stamp. Uh, no, you see, he is, mm. so the, what, what is he proposing for the Nigerians? A rubber stamp uh, situation in Nigeria? You see, let's get serious. MPP never want to assist any administration succeed because they see themselves as the most sensible people in the country and that it is only them on, or, the, or, or the highway. Now, on the other hand, NDC believes in the people. And NDC believes that no matter what it is, we must help to make sure that the people are better off. So even if we are in opposition, we have a responsibility to ensure that the people's livelihoods are better. And so we have to contribute our quota towards making that life better. Because if the electricity tariffs go down, it goes down for all Ghanaians, NDC, MPP, and future generations alike. When petrol prices go down, it goes down for everybody across board, etc., etc. Unless, of course, I mean, and of course, the MPP have shown that uh, the new MPP is even more vindictive than the previous MPP. And they are going to go after people that they perceive to be NDC. And they are going to discriminate along the lines of you and us. Nigeria situation. Yes, because, yeah. I mean, even with police recruits, they are looking out for people and sacking them. We're going to be based, discussing that, yeah, Prince. Yeah, I'm saying that <laughs> MPP thinks that they can segregate Ghanaians into you and us and give different prizes. So you must even show ID cards. And I'm, I won't be surprised at all that the purpose of their pushing for the national identification and doing everything digital is to isolate people from the register to see who is NDC card bearing and make sure that they charge you extra. These people are like that. And the person that they've put in place in charge of that is the same person who handled their MPP related things. So I think that there's a worry. But quite apart from that, I think that the Nigerians have a similar situation to what we have here. Okay. We have a situation where people lied their way to power mm. and made lofty promises and time is catching up with them. Prince, I'll give you um, some few minutes to wrap up. Okay, yes. let me just go for a quick measure. Thank you very much. Uh, viewers, you're still watching Good Morning Africa and it's live on Pan-African Television. If you want to connect with us, do so by sending us a text message on our WhatsApp number 056-074-2139. 056-074-2139. We're also live on Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash Pan-African Television. Quick commercial break. We'll be right back. It's a beautiful day I'm gonna make most of it It's a beautiful day A day to share with you You'll make my world go round Yeah, yeah, yeah It's really got me saying Nice girl Experience the wide range of top quality and affordable electronics, phones, tablets, home and office appliances from NASCO. NASCO, bring home happiness.
How much is this? 600. Wonderful. I think I'll take this one. But um, what's your size? Uh, 44. This is 43. I can tell you 44. This is the man, your home of quality shoes from the UK. We have various shoes for the office, for your formal and casual occasions. Visit the man in Abilengpe. Our office is located just behind Aquatech. Our telephone numbers are 020-873-7166. You can also reach us on our landline 0302-730-760. We'll be expecting you. Welcome back from that quick commercial break. We're in conversation with uh, Prince Eric Ajay, who's a member of the NDC, and Ibrahim Ajay, who's also a member of the MPP. And we've been discussing um, the issue in Nigeria and, uh, you know, the fact that some protesters are calling for a change of government. And uh, we initially discussed the, uh, the fact that the UN is warning against the threat of terrorism on regional scale in Africa. And uh, Prince was on the floor before we went for the breather. Prince. Yeah, I'll be very brief. Um, actually, have you listened to the song that they, 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 you were talking about, uh, Dibia and others? Yeah. You know there's some songs that they've made, uh, the Change song? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've not, I've not, I've not heard it. Oh, the video is available. I can actually give it to you. Oh, so you can, give it to me. So you can let me. viewers. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, it talks about the fact that they've been lied to, and uh, the way Buhari and his people have lied their way to power, and the promises that they made, and uh, how things are not going well, how pr prices of petrol is going up. And when you listen to the song, mm. it sounds so familiar. Eh? Mm. It's, it's, it's not funny. In fact, which one? Oh. You see, he's smiling. He understands. He's, he's <laughs> oh, watched it. He's watched it. Well, it sounds like Onapo. Sh no, no. no. I, I was, in fact, I think that before we end the program, we should play it. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. Okay. Is it Mama yeah. Paper? Um, it's actually... No, I think viewers, you will see it. <laughs> you will see it and judge for yourself. But it's so familiar. What's the title? So that my, my producers will start working on it before the show ends. Do you know the title? Uh, uh, I said I'll send the video to okay, you right no away. <laughs> yeah, but uh, basically it talks about the situation in Nigeria mm. and the fact that uh, they voted for the man because of the promises and assurances. And today the reality is dawning on them that the people have lied their way to power and prices of um, things are going up. They are not fulfilling their promises. They are dodging, you know, they are claiming that they didn't say this on a campaign trail. Another person says, I didn't hear this on the campaign trail. And it sounds like the vetting of some ministers, sounds like some vice presidents talking. And even today, if you listen to the comparison that is being made, it's so very mm. like Ghana. So I now believe them that the things that happen in Nigeria oftentimes happen okay. in Ghana. Very well. Mm. Viewers, send your comments to 0560742139. We're moving it straight to... Very quickly. Quickly. Oh, you still want to... Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. We just want to explain about how reducing the, the cost of energy to produce gas. <laughs> My brother here was saying that I was talking hollow something. I think he's still in the dark ages. Maybe... I work and live in Nigeria. One, one factory, one guy. Yeah, but listen. <laughs> what, 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 I, I, I went through the process with why him. Why one Cassava guy. tubers. Mm -hmm. You peel them, you grate them. Mm -hmm. Now, to remove the water, you put it into a pressing machine. Tie, mm -hmm. way, pressing machine. Mm -hmm. Some are still doing manual. But again, if you go to Nigeria, unless you're still in the Stone Ages, you know, they're still doing by the hand one. But they do pressing machine. This is on 170 million Nigerians. Mm. Sebi, Sebi, we've moved forward. If you still think they're still in the Stone Age, they put the grated cassava, mm. Kwame, into a machine to remove the excess water. Okay? And when you remove the excess water, then you're left with the residue, mm -hmm. which you dry. So that's how you make Gary. Maybe he doesn't know. Okay. If, um, so well, imagine so you reduce at, energy. Let's uh, the go down. Well, at, at, let's at, let's, at let's move on. Let's move on and look at some of the uh, <laughs> local stories. The, uh, the Guardian Times reported that um, and indeed, it's a fact that Utiko Jaba has been approved by parliament. Uh, I don't know if it's both the minority and the majority, but as far as I know, she's been approved by parliament. Amidst all the 
brouhaha surrounding her uh, nomination and the fact that you know she described the uh, ex-president as having the heart of something I don't want to mention. Um, let me start with you, Prince Derek J, on, on this issue. The minority resisted with all the rigor and the, with all the, 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 the missiles it has. Yet, Utiko Jaba has been approved by, well, as, as, they, as, as they put it, parliament. Are you surprised? Not at all. In fact, um, you see, it takes us back to the parliamentary bribery scandal and the mindset of the NPP administration uh, with respect to passing their ministers or nominees into ministers. The same pattern. The same, same pattern. Uh, we are told that even before Otiko was passed, she was at the Flagstaff House uh, waiting for her swearing in. And exactly the same way the president had signed already the instrument of office and so on. And that's the same thing that had happened to Honorable Ejaku and Honorable Asaf Mafu, whose vetting had been put on hold, whose apologies were still pending. And the view of the uh, viewers, as in those who were viewing or following the uh, vetting process by television, is still pending because we haven't seen evidence of the fact that they came back with any apologies, retraction, etc., mm. as was required prior to the, uh, what do you call it, uh, their passage and again it gives credence to the reasons why bribery would be occasioned in fact if you see what otiko went through no one will want to go through that would you mm. if you can have consensus so otiko's issue now gives a very vivid uh, shall i say example of why somebody would in an attempt to avoid that kind of situation mm. and that media sensation pay so much money now as to who it was mm. i cannot say it was honorable jacko mm. in the same vein i cannot say it was honorable asaf mafu because the two of them were the ones who were uh, 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 in abeyance in terms of had been suspended pending approval so they both would have benefited from the passage mm. whether they did it jointly individually or whether it was done on their behalf by even higher authority at the presidency i cannot say it's an investigation that can net that okay. and i think that it is important that two things happen one that that investigation is conducted not by parliament but by an independent organization like shraj and i'm happy that shraj has now been petitioned and we are hopeful that shraj will take it up okay. and will net that number two is the issue of national service mm -hmm. national service is important unless we think it's not important and i believe that this administration uh, does not value national service that much because mm. uh, they're having issues with the national service personnel uh, they don't want to pay them, mm. uh, even though uh, they are due for high, um, a pay increase, as in like the uh, allowance increase. They've made promises of paying various allowances, teacher trainee allowances, nursing trainee allowances. So why not national service allowances, which has been, you know, uh, passed by government. The government of Ghana is the government of Ghana. In any case, the good things that uh, the MAMA administration did, mm. which included increase of salaries uh, by one 12.5% uh, mm. across but for all listen, it's good for all workers <coughs> all workers must enjoy it mm. in the same vein the increase uh, of the national service uh, allowance is also good and they must enjoy it and it's effective first January they should not make a mistake and vary it mm. two is that there are so many good things that have been left behind the hostels the schools and so on mm. just the same way they've not thrown grenades into these they should not throw a grenade into the national service uh, uh, allowance thing and then going forward National service shows patriotism. They have the word patriotism in their name, and they must value it. So where somebody who claims to be a patriot <clears throat> shows unpatriotic character mm. of deliberately dodging national service, and I'm using the word deliberately, because it comes across as though it was deliberate. That's if we are to believe what Honorable um, Madam Otiko Jaba says. And I'm not saying that all she said is true. I don't have uh, the facts, and it's not been corroborated by an independent organization. So I just take it on face value. That's the truth. Mm. She had opportunity and she didn't serve. She's now asking to be given an opportunity to serve. And I think that she must be granted that opportunity to serve. Mm. I think that the ideal thing to do, if you want to put premium on the need for people to kill themselves for the country, as in serve the country, patriotically, then you would want to say that she should do her national service mm. and then be made minister. That's if 
it is anything to go by. Because the not, uh, nothing in the uh, constitution bars her from being made minister. But then the law, that's the subsidiary laws, bar her from holding public office. Mm -hmm. And being a minister is a public office. So in one vein, you pass her, and another law, somebody can go to court and bar her. It doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Some people have proposed, for example, that she should be made the minister as in being passed, but it should, the first year should be considered as national service, in which case she would uh, accept national service allowance that's the upgraded allowance. You see, she's going to be a beneficiary mm. from the three, whatever, to five. Otiko is a, a very big time beneficiary uh, of the national service scheme mm. because she's gotten the 60% raise. Mm. And then she has to be under supervision because national service people are not posted to places to head institutions. Mm. So she has to be supervised. So at the very least, she has to be under the senior minister and reports every day to the senior minister her operations, seek advice and clearance for that one year period. So that it will serve as a deterrent to others. But there's a longer queue of people in the MPP in terms of the uh, ministerial nominees who have also not done national service. Um, Madame Afeko, Afek, what's the name? Afeki? Catherine Afeko. 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 Afeko has also uh, not done her national service. And she is pleading to be allowed to, you know, remedy it. Did doing. Oti Bless do his national service? Now I'll get to that. I'll get to that. And I'm then, uh, no, and, and I'm, 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 no, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Now, so there's um, uh, what do you call it, uh, Afeku, and then there's another one too, uh, who also confirms that um, she's not done it. Who's that one? Help me. Oh, and, I don't the, know. And the MPP. That three. Lodi and Mahama. Ayokobuchi, you mean? Uh, Ayokobuchi, but mm. hers is different. Mm. She finished before national service became. Did you she? Know, yes, she did. She finished. When, when National Service Law, I think it was passed in 1980s. Into. No, yeah, 1973. No, no, but I'm sorry. 1973 about Act 462. Mm -hmm. That's when National Service came into being. And then she was, she, I think she, well, she claims, claims okay, well, like I, I said, like I said, you see, I don't hold brief for MPP mm -hmm. nominees. If she's lying, then that's perjury. Mm -hmm. But I want to believe that they will not go and perjure themselves. That's why I'm giving them the, you know, benefit of the doubt. I'm saying that she claims that uh, she... Uh, beat the system by finishing ahead of mm. the passage of the law, making it mandatory, or the part that makes it mandatory before you can hold public office. Mm -hmm. The law may be in force, but maybe it was not a requirement for you to hold public office until 1980, whatever, when she had whatever. And right. they cannot take respective effects, so hers is in a different category. But I'm saying that if we all as Ghanaians agree that national service or dying for your country or mm. serving your country is good and that the laws of Ghana must be respected, particularly by parliament. Because law, these laws are passed in parliament. Mm. So parliament cannot say that the constitution is supreme, so ignore the laws. Then they, they, they should all close shop and go home. Then there's the issue of the vote that occurred and the kind of uh, sad situations that occurred. Mm. First is that parliament breached its own laws. Um, this, this procedure. You are supposed to have a seal and stamp of the speaker. It was not present. That was fraudulent. I mean, to put it bluntly, it's fraudulent. It's wrong. You don't do that. Until the minority called the attention of parliament, as in the speaker, <clears throat> that would have been done. What was the motive? Mm. Was it to make sure that uh, the voting process was a sham mm. so that people's votes can be altered? Maybe they had an, a separate box like they've been doing in the elections, as happened in 2016? Mm -hmm. Is that what they're trying to do in Parliament? The thing that they've mastered, they're trying to do it in Parliament too? Is that what it is? Now, the minority also showed their indignation, not only by not voting us and abstaining, mm -hmm. but at least they showed extra maturity by staying in Parliament. And I think that going forward, we must cooperate with one another. It doesn't mean that you have the majority in Parliament. You have Therefore, your own issues. I mean, the NDC, I, I, I think, I remember during your, your time, you had people who had not done their national service. And they, they, like they, they who? Oti Bless. Okay, so Oti Bless. I don't, like I said. I, I don't know about Ablakwa and Kwa Ofosukwachi, but I know about Oti Bless. Okay, fine. Um, I don't know either about Ablakwa and Ofosukwachi. Mm. Granted, uh, let's assume that they hadn't done it. Mm. Did MPP raise issues with it? Mm. Now, if they had raised issues with it, I think that would have had this discussion. My position would have been the same. Okay. So why was now, the why was the board uh, set up? To now, now I'm saying to, that I'm saying that I'm saying that I don't know. It never came up. Mm. So we are discussing a post facto, and I don't know the facts. So discussing a hypothesis for me is not useful. Mm. But in the case of Oti Bless, I recall that in his vetting, issues were raised. One was with his name, which one was his real name, and whether he had changed his name, whether he had changed something. I don't know the exact details, but I don't recall, and I'm saying that, that I don't recall, that national service was one of the key things. I don't recall. It may well be, have been one of the issues. Mm. But I think that if it was, 
the NPP should have insisted that the right thing is done. If they failed to do that, even though they knew it was wrong, were they saving it for a day like this? Mm. Now, two, is that even if it was wrong, mm. and indeed it would have been wrong, if it is indeed the case, then that should be the more reason why this should not happen. NPP should not tell us that somebody stole. So me too, I'm going to steal some. Or I'm going to steal more. There was one thief, so I'm bringing three thieves. Is that what this governance is about? Okay. Is it getting better or getting worse? Okay. NPP should stop this joke. Very well. Ibrahim Ajay. Kwame, mm. I want to ask you a very quick question. Mm. It's not rhetorical. Do you need a degree to become a member of parliament? Do you no. need a university education? No, you don't. Good. But And a member of parliament is a public office, am I right? Yes. Good. National service, the caveat is this. When you complete tertiary education in government, uh, university in Ghana, or indeed outside of Ghana, mm. then it is incumbent upon you to do national service. Yes. It was Act 462 in 1973 mm -hmm. when national service became instituted. Mm -hmm. So here you have the uh, anathema. Uh, because I don't need a degree to become a member of parliament and hold public office. But here's a, a, a law. Act 462, 1973 is the reference date saying that when I complete education, tertiary, university, then I do one year national service. Can so, I, so I, oh, no, hold on. Some, no, hold on, hold no, on. Let me make his no, 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 just take notes. Take notes. I'll give you a rebuttal. No, no, I don't want my trajectory to go. Take notes. Take notes. Take notes. There are two different kinds of national service. There's a post-sex form. In fact, those of us who went to the sex form, okay, he's a younger guy, so maybe he may not know. That's why I'm supplying information. Okay. You were allowed to do national service after sex form before the tertiary angle came in. The tertiary angle came in when there was a gap because of the Aluta and so on. Mm -hmm. It became necessary to do two years that's post uh, uh, sex form and then post university. Very so, well. But any one of them qualifies you. Very well. and, and I think one person benefited from that process. But even just to add also, it is, but not, it is not just the case. I'll give you a time. No yeah, right. It's not just the case that you have to uh, have a degree to do uh, to be a minister or to be an MP or whatever else. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that your uh, your tertiary institution uh, education is, subs is assumed to be, have been subsidized by the state, mm -hmm. and so you must also return the favor by doing something for nearly less than what your true yeah. value is. Okay. That's what. Right. Thank you for the intervention. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let me ask you again, mm -hmm. Kwame. Do you need a secondary school certificate to become a member of parliament? No, you don't. You don't. Mm -hmm. So again, my argument still holds water. It doesn't. If I didn't go to school, mm -hmm. subsidized. If I didn't go to no, listen. If I didn't ask school, I didn't go to school. School dropout. Yes. JHS. I didn't go to school. Cry. It, it, kindergarten self. I know makeup. Mm -hmm. Does that disqualify me from becoming an MP? The answer is no. Exactly. So if I didn't go to school, which means the sixth form that is bringing, you didn't benefit it, it from does, that. doesn't even mm -hmm. come into it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So do you see the issue now? Yeah, but, no, but she has completed the So she benefited. So make, make the argument from no, both. But I yes. understand. No, it's, yeah. but it's important to okay. make the point very so well. that we, we can enrich we can the connect. debate. That's very well. Can very enrich well. the debate. Very well. Now, what we have here is a case of the NDC shifting goalpost. First and foremost, they were saying that President John Romani Mahana had been insulted. Honorable Otiko Officer Jabba said, no, I didn't insult him. I described what he was actually doing in, in terms of his um, superintending over the SADA issue. And for her, it was an embarrassment because her mother is from the north. And so, you know, you, somebody can disgrace themselves, but when they embarrass you, there is that uh, attachment. You know, a stranger can disgrace himself, but when you remember your family, he embarrasses you. And so she owns that embarrassment, said, You embarrass me. And the person uh, is wicked has an evil heart and that those were her descriptions of him they were of the view that no what she needs to do is come and apologize do the mayor culpa i'm guilty like fifi Kwete did and then be passed through and i don't believe we want a vetting system kwami mm -hmm. whereby you can say anything you want as long as you apologize and we, and you we remove all shades of integrity you can go scot-free she said no i'm a woman of my word what I said was not an insult. I will not apologize for something which I stand to hold to be true. And is it not wickedness? I'm just going to look at Sada. 300 million Ghana cities. Or is it dollars? Bro? I forget in the currency now. Because what happened? President Mahama, and during Atamil's time, he gave Sada to then Vice President Mahama, because he's, he's a son of the North, and said, make sure that this project deliver it to our people in the North, in the three northern regions. What happened? The malfeasance. The stealing. 
what used to happen, in fact, when the SADA officials used to come and inspect your guinea fowl, your, your uh, guinea fowl farm, mm. what w w would happen, and there's a documentary on a, a, a sister TV channel mm. of yours, but let me mention it because it's, it's important, TV3, mm. Sebi, Sebi, uh, allow me, where the, but they're showing that what would happen is this, let's say I, I want to get funding for the SADA, mm. so they come and show, I, I, they see my uh, chicklings or hatchlings, mm. So then they say that well, this person can do the guinea fowl. I've shown you that I have some base here. Then another person will take that same group of chickens into their own hatchery. So you just, you know, I, 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 bought, I lend you my chickens for inspection. You two, you get your funding. It's on TV3. Why am I mentioning this? Because the amount of malfeasance and corruption, mm -hmm. that's why she said it's wicked. Because the three northern regions are the most deprived. Yeah. When it comes to poverty, you find it in the three northern regions more than anywhere else in Ghana. Yet, what did President John Dramani Mahama do? Nothing. Nothing mm. to actually deliver those promises. So if she, if she says, as a daughter of the North as well, this is wickedness, she's right. We know today, today, today. Last week, I was on this station with um, Prince Derek J, mm. an issue of $13.9 million mm. for the Veep's house, not far from Cantonment's Mosque. I pass there every day. My brother, Prince Derek, just said, oh, Bamiya is lying. It's 5.9 million. Mm. Are, we, are we on that uh, issue? No, uh, no. Uh, when when you went off tangent, did I? Bami, it's, it's, Bami. it's an you important see, issue. You see, this, this no, is... No, I would have to you. I'm oh, landing. Yeah. Okay. I'm linking to what NDC say are insults. And Otiku Jabba is saying that it's not insult. I'm describing a person and I'm linking his neglect of certain policy interventions why the man is wicked and we in the north three northern regions and indeed ghana are suffering and i'm linking again i'm dovetailing because it's relevant that here you have the yabungura november 13 november 14th 2016. Mm. he said addressing his excellency then former president john dramani mahama that our brother is president but we are thirsty because there's no water projects that they can see in gonja land where president mahama comes from by he said our brother, by Chibi, he, said, water, he, right? said, he said, we, but there's Chibi yes, water, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. He put he water said, in Chibi for that, Akufa and his people. He said that our brother is present where we are thirsty. But here's the thing. The swimming pool at the Veep's office, uh, sorry, house, the $13.9 million one, that's exclusive of NHIS and VAT, cost $124,000. Swimming pool, pet. Meanwhile, people in the northern region, no water. But President Mahama can sign off to Consul Limited. It is not true. See, oh, he signed it. It is not true. true. Oh, Listen, one, you, you, won't, you won't win this debate. I tell uh, you. Can, can, we, can we have that debate now? No, you let, won't. Let him, no, because, let him, but no, let because him, it Prince, you won't win this debate. It's important he makes it. We are holding documents. No, but if we are holding documents. Okay. Yeah, sure. You, you can burn them all before you leave office. We are holding right. documentation. Okay. We'll have that debate. And Consul Limited said that you've paid us $8.9 million. Bring back that $5.9 million that he's talking about. Which is eight? At five is what? Ten. A team. Mm. The company themselves, Consul Limited, on the uh, uh, Spintex Road, when you see the Glow office, opposite, just before you get to Flower Pot, that's where Consul are. They said, I will receive <coughs> $8.9 million, Kwame. Swimming pool, $124,000, signed by President Mahama. It's not true. Hold on. It is Mimba, not true. Mimba. No, you should oh, stop him from lying. No, no, he's um, lying. You see, no, no, last week, you see, no, this is wrong. See, no. Last week, no, but this is wrong. He he's, making, no, he's making a point. <coughs> That's why you're here. <coughs> so let him make a point. No, but he's saying sign by President Mahama. Halepen. He's lying. Halepen. Halepen. Nidne Kwame. Last week, he said Vice President Bami was lying. Today, I want to see him repeat that thing again. $8.9 million. The company said we received. And they were asking Honorable Fremont Parry, Chief of Staff, Writing and writing, can we have the remaining 5.9 million that he's talking about? Oh. Flowers. Are you going to pay? Oh, oh I'm coming. Mm. Flowers. <coughs> for foy? For foy? <coughs> Flowers. $134,000. Fence wall. $421,000. That's why we said we won't pay. Oh, no. come on, Charlie. That's We're why we talking said we about pay. why Otiko Jabba called President Mahama wicked. You see, he's going there again. Uh, that's the no, discussion no, we're no, having. Yeah. I'm on track. Mm. If you're off you're page, on come back on track. I mean, I'm on page. But you cannot accuse, so you cannot page. accuse Prince the President Delica falsely. J. Oh, Charlie, what do we say? The buck stops with who? Oh, and really? President Mahama is telling us that so, people are signing checks. That is good. Prince, if you're telling us oh. that President Mahama, for the last yeah. eight years he was in office, four years as president, four years as vice president, four plus four, eight, eight years he was there. 
Flagstaff House. <laughs> Superintending over, <laughs> Nina, for those uh, who are so like, watching in that, Africa, Daniel means eight. I said that if, um, if it gets to the point where uh, some of the ministers appointed by His Excellency Ekufo Adobe yes, misbehave. Yes. No, they already misbehave. Yes, I'm okay. listening. In the oh, one so month, you, you're you're gonna, 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 call, a brand new call, a brand new call, I'm your intelligence couple. This is what you do. Oh, yeah? Okay. The buck stops. Okay. Akufa with the desk. president of the day. Wonderful. Now, Wonderful. the superlatives that you want to use, because you can see the, the input or otherwise of the president. What did he do to arrest the corruption at Sada? Tell me one thing Pen Wiladi did, President Mahama. Zero. It's not true. Oh, you see, you see you're going on that tangent again. Uh, Charlie, don't debate this one. We are holding documentation. We are now in so government. Bring the documentation out. Allah you cannot Allah. Allah. I mean, so where is your document? Show us the document right now. Oh, you, you no, see? no, you say you have documentation. Uh, Show it to us. You are right. government. You're, Yo, not, yeah. you're not on a council. So let me answer you. Let me you cannot you. be reckless you. like you are in opposition. Let me answer Show you. us the document now. Let me answer you. Let, let, let him answer. No, but you cannot come and bump. I mean, I'm not saying you're here. Yeah, you're sweating. So you are already. But he should share the document. No, definitely. If I demand the document, so where are the documents? Yeah, where are the documents? Uh, yeah, I'm going to answer you. No, Relax. don't answer. Show us the document. I'm going to answer you right now. It's in your head? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, it's with Honorable Frevo Parry. Come Chief on. Star. Then go back to your oh, office. Oh, you see? Don't hold this, this one. No, go no, back no. to your office. You see? Uh, you but to, how do you? Isaac Odongo. Hold on. Yeah. Isaac Odongo. We should believe he, you. I was on a, pa a panel with him last Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Honorable Isaac Odongo. When this issue came up, do you remember? We talked about the seven billion. I'm hoping we will have time to speak about so that. So don't waste the well. time then. Oh, don't. I, yeah. I'm investing time because Ghanaians are now seeing the the. But show us the documents. So you don't talk plenty. That you did. Now, show the, us the, the document. company that is at center because no that, story that, that, so. that is the the, the, the shouldn't be that, that that is the honest broker. You know the company Kwame, is saying Kwame, you are lying this man to run away without showing you any documents. Eight point nine million dollars. Mm. Mm. Eight point nine. You are in government to show us the evidence. They, you, this interjection will work, and I will know your. No, you are like needles, now in government. You are, are not on the campaign trail. And I will continue as the documents in your buttocks. <laughs> right now, you are hot. <laughs> no, and I'm going to you, tell you. You cannot lie. Your interjection won't work. But it's also lying. It was also very important that you show us the document so that we can clearly understand what you're talking about. Where are the evidence? You have it. Oh, you have. It. Where? Have it. When? You when? Have it. Are you bringing it the next time when? you come here? You know, we need to see that that I, document. I, I, do you know, even before I come here, I believe it. Be no, 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 no. Oh yes, okay. because Isaac Odongo he doesn't have anything. on Joy FM. And I, ah, this is not Joy FM. Forgive me for the, TV. Forgive me. No problem. No problem. And, uh, make I'm reference. Joy FM. So, the reason why I mention make your, make that reference. Good. Make that reference. The reason why I mention your colleagues mm. in the industry is for reference and for the but show integrity the of my statement. Um, your colleague, Sam Salari. Confirmed the document which is, Isaac Adongo, is he the boss of just AES? like just like is he the is boss doing, of AES? Just like Prince is doing, was saying, "Oh, we can't believe this no. document." It was confirmed. Show ASL. us the document. ASL Association for no, Engineering I've, I've, seen, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen that document. You know, uh, by on, ASL on, on on yeah on social yeah. media platforms, yeah. but I, I cannot authenticate oh, is it authenticate authenticate, authenticate yeah. that particular document because it was not signed hold on hold because on. it was not signed. Document has let not me signed. Let, let me help you that Apart document has not let been me signed. help you mm. louis atongo a-t-o-n-g-o is uh, an executive at asl i've confirmed it no forget that it wasn't no, signed no no hold on, no, no. Uh, so who I, is supposed to I'm append in. his signature hold to on, that document hold on, you see, hold on. You see no you we're, we're dealing with we're, you. We're, respectfully we're okay. dealing with matters of national interest yes here. sir you uh, have made an allegation right and every allegation must be backed with an evidence with a clear unequivocal evidence to that effect so you're coming out to say that yes there's a document which has been confirmed by a certain person who works with aesl that person is not the CEO. That person it, is. Was Louis it the person? Atongo. Was it the person in charge of the project? Or of the project? Yes. He was the person in charge yes. of the project, and he has come out. Uh, to Louis Tongo. I mean, why are mm. we having this debate? Mm. The, the things are online. Mm. Are we not in the digital mm. space? It's was online. It, but the document was not signed. Oh, you see. Oh, is that legitimate? You are on hold, hold, hold on. Is it not? Is it you not? Are, it's not the MPP. It's a valid point. It's a valid point, the the valid point you make mm. on the signature thing. Mm. But here's a case where when you have corroborating evidence mm -hmm. signed mm -hmm. that we have received 8.9 million. Mm -hmm. So what under what pretense mm -hmm. or, or what authority did the government of Ghana under President John Dramani Mahama, mm -hmm. who wrote Tiko Java was right I, I to think they are being smart with you. I mean, no, for all you know, for all you know, for all you know, for all you know, the exact figures uh, or figure is 5.9. Okay. 
Oh, then you have come so, out to say it's, uh, wait, so, wait, wait. You have come out to say it's thirteen point nine. Therefore, they are saying, oh, so now these people want to say it's thirteen point. Then let's go and and, and take and take. But here's the case that the money. they're saying we receive eight point nine million. Yeah. So they are now what we call Look, uh, putting them indicting themselves because it's only five, and you admit to taking eight. You willfully took money that you knew was not rightfully yours. Okay. So you do, they are now putting themselves right in, in front of the doors of the Sawan prison. I'm talking the executive directors of Consul Limited. Okay. So that's the corroborating evidence. Okay. Saying, I, I, because I'm not, let's assume, it's not true, but for the sake of our debates, mm. let's assume the five million is true. Mm. Then you have Consul Limited. Mm. Huh? An international company. Yes. Doing fake, uh, false invoicing. Yeah. Which is fraud. Yeah. And now fraud is a felony under the MPP, mm. which means you go to jail. Mm. Under the so, laws of Ghana. Under oh, yeah, the yeah, under the laws of Ghana. Uh, let me grant you that one. Mm. Okay. You're not granting me that. Uh, that's I'll a grant fact. It, I'll grant Stop it lying. I'll <laughs> grant it to you. You're not granting uh, me that. Because you guys know how to print me to share. <laughs> so you, you, I, I can't enter that world. Not world of corruption. Mm. This is a company saying, I'm just for the sake of devil's advocate, Kwame. Mm. They're lying. Mm. So they're over-invoicing we Ghanaians by $3 million. I'm all right. So uh, they, they're just looking to go to jail. Clearly, that's not the case. Mm. They've been given 8.9 million by the NDC for flowers in the in the in the house, 134 thousand dollars, a fence wall. And remember Jibril Kanazoi, the Ghana Embassy in Burkina Faso, 621 thousand dollars. Mm. 621 thousand dollars. But yet we don't have uh, the, the same amount of commitment. He's talking about Lawa. Wasn't not President Mahama said to the nurses, "I don't care if I go into opposition." You won't get your allowance today on principle. Then later, it does a 180 degree U turn. So you consider the document. So the man, the man, has no around about yes, as so, legitimate. Otiko Jaba is 100% correct to say President Mahama, the former president of Ghana, is wicked. Very well. Very well. And okay. you are so reiterating. Wicked. You are reiterating. Oh, I'm re yes. Because what, what when Ghanaians are dying, how many incubators? How many incubators? How many Kwame Krumahs have we lost at Kolebu? Because this government, or the former government, was rather spending $124,000 on swimming pool. Yeah? And for Foy, for Foy, for those watching in Africa, is mm. the guy word for flowers. $134,000. Mm. Not cities, not kwacha, not naira, dollars. Mm -hmm. On for Foy, things that are seasonal, they will die. Those flowers will die. Just like Ghani children at Kolebu died because you didn't provide, mm. before you didn't provide Kwame. elevators. Kwame, mm. Let me give you the pregnant sequence. women were dying yeah. in labor. Very well. Under your uh, tenure. What? What? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you are wicked. No problem. What? What? what, and what, what let, let me let me give you this. Yeah. What? What? Just, right. just, just one minute. Just one minute. Rebata, and then we we'll move on to the next. Yeah, no, yeah. he's been spending like ten minutes. No, are you are you started with? He didn't give you any evidence. He didn't give you nothing. But you you started there. So just rebata and let's move on. I think I think in fairness. Uh, one minute will not be sufficient, so please give me the last. No, so, but so but take have, we, 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 we're working with time. So, we're working if one minute is not Prince, enough, you, you had take sixty seconds. Oh, you had his time. He had his time. He made his point. You've made your point. You see, I'm just giving you, see, you see, because see. otherwise I would have to give no, him the no, same no, minutes no, for rebuttal. No, but it's important. Mm. He's concluded in his lies by saying that former president is wicked, is the devil, and I didn't say devil. I said wicked. Like, oh, okay, so, those are, so those that, that point you depart from Otiko. You know, the devil part you depart. You're on, on the devil part, you can use the motive words. No, so well, you please rebut. Okay. We have just five minutes now, to wrap you see, up. So. Um, the first thing is that prior to demolition, mm. there was some mobilization that was given. And uh, before I get to the uh, issue, I think it must be clear that AESL, okay, the Architectural and Engineering Services Limited, is a government agency. Number two is that uh, the building we are talking about is for the vice presidents, all vice presidents of Ghana over time. So it's a security area. And so you cannot have just any tender, an open tender. So there was a restricted tender. And three companies that were screened by national security, etc., mm. were shortlisted. One pulled out, and that's how comes Consa won. Okay? Now, the other thing also is that national security at some point had to supervise the project for obvious reasons. The Vice President of the Republic of Ghana today has been reckless enough to bring this thing not just into the public space, but to cause for the showing of pictures and all the details of this thing, mm. which otherwise, and makes nonsense of the, the processes. And this is not the first time. In fact, this idea was mooted under Aliu Mahama, under MPP, mm. for this project to be done. Now, um, $3.5 million was supposed to have been given prior to all the design stage, etc., done. 
Then they were supposed to bring the schedule of work, uh, the bill of quantities, the scope of works, and so on. At that point, AESL presented a $30 million budget for the thing. And the presidency objected and rejected the whole thing. And so at that point, they said they won't pay anything like that. So all the things that he's saying, okay, are lies. And if it's an extension of what the vice it's president the has told you to kind of tell us, I'm then please, you when you go fact, back to him, the truth. No, yeah. no. Next to that, um, the national security and the, the same presidency, uh, when they received the contract documents, uh, never signed, but EESL signed. EESL signed. The government of Ghana did not sign. Note, did not sign. Then also, AESL indicated that they were confident that if independent uh, uh, actors, etc., or uh, contractors were put to you know, quantify and so on, they would come to the same figure. But the government said they will not sign that kind of frivolous expenditure. In fact, the vice president of the Republic of Ghana uh, then wrote uh, for an investigation to be conducted into the thing because he would not have any part of this. And we must credit uh, 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 listen, I see for that. Now, but who and, contracted them in the first place? No, hold on, hold on. I'm saying I'm coming. And, and didn't saying, you agree on a I'm specific coming, amount coming, of money before you awarded the contract? Now, this is the exact figure that ESL brought: thirteen point one nine six two five two point two two six six. That's the amount. That's thirteen point nine. And they said no. Meanwhile, certificates had been raised. That mm -hmm. is, uh, the claims that were done were eight point one million. Mm. Now, payment as of January 2017 was $5.6 dollars. Okay. The outstanding certificates were 2.5. If you take that out, you get a 3.1 uh, uh, that uh, had been paid. Okay? And I think that it is very clear. The outstanding works that are uh, there is, uh, what do you call it? 5.7, okay. uh, 8, 9, and so on. So far, uh, AS, AS, ESL say they are happy with the works that have been done, the quality of materials, and so on. Mm. And they have uh, indicated that 70% of the work has been completed. Mm. Now, the other lie that my friend told the about truth. swimming pools... And you should be wrapping up truth. for me because I, I need truth. to... Yeah, I think that... In fact, I, need to, I, I, I want us to I am daring, the, the, I am daring, and I, my extension... You see, they are in government today. They mm. cannot pretend to be in opposition. They cannot pretend that they are not in control of the government. Mm. In any case, he says the backstops were... With the president, Every, everywhere. so the president, everywhere. and if the vice president is directly under him yeah. and not under the chief uh, or the senior or the minister, mm -hmm. then the vice president cannot be talking recklessly. Okay, very well. And so they should let, produce the documents. Very well. They let, cannot let, come let, to let, studios let, and be talking to, just yeah. anyhow very like well. they're on a campaign. Let's field. read. Let's read some messages coming in. This one uh, says, "Izu, watching from Abuja, Nigeria." Honestly, uh, the NDC man in the studio understands and captured the Nigerian situation succinctly. The present government here came to power unprepared with lies, propaganda, and only to come uh, to the reality that governance is not um, about um, government is not about promises but performance, evidence based. The present government claimed to have recovered phantom billions of dollars from the looters, yet refused to disclose the exact amount and from who and 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 who uh, they got the money from. Right now, they are begging the parliament uh, to grant their request to borrow um, a lesser amount from China. In terms of corruption, this, uh, the last administration was indeed corrupt, but it is evident that the present federal government is as corrupt as the last government. One, looted funds from the last government was used to fund their election. Two, most of the people who looted in the last PDP administration are now members of the present APC that is in power and um, th they are untouchable. Three, some key members of the present government officials, uh, to, secretary to the government of the federation, have been in indicted uh, of corrupt practices they, by repeated um, anti-corruption fighting agencies, yet Mr. President refused to sack them. Thank you very much for sending that. Even the uh, president is refusing to return to Nigeria, claiming he's sick. <laughs> so Izu sends this one from Abuja. Thank you very much, Izu, and thank you for watching Good Morning Africa on Pan-African Television. This one says, the worst mistake... Uh, okay, well, um, if... Oh, I'm so, I'm so very ashamed at the posture of Ibrahim. We must be matured in our uh, communication, says Sadiq Sukuto from Wa. Um, and this one says, with regards to the continuing 
uh, increase in price of general goods and services in Nigeria, I think it's high time the government creates an enabling environment to attract more investors to the country, thereby producing more of similar commodities at affordable price. The government has to empower the youth uh, to go into agriculture so as to boost production in agriculture. Uh, Benya sent this one. This one says, having been appointed as a minister, I believe she's already on the road to service uh, in the interest of the ordinary Ghanaian and the nation as a whole. So tell me, what, what service is greater than serving your country as a, as a minister? Please leave <laughs> Madame Utiko alone. <laughs> and uh, somebody has actually sent the video you are talking about. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This one says, my brother Ibrahim is actually, he's too MPP. Uh, <laughs> people will weep for NDC very soon. Joseph sends that one from... Uh, from uh, from Upper West Region. And uh, we have some messages coming in from uh, our viewers and they sent that one through social media, uh, Facebook. Paddy Richard says, good morning, I like your African wear, Kwame. Thank you very much, exactly. Paddy. Um, Ayuba Muin says, uh, you perpetuated an illegality on Ghanaians and expect them to take it hook, line and sinker. Um, how could an institution that formulates and passes laws impugn their image in such an embarrassing manner? Who issued the waiver to Otiko? Because the NSS board, uh, NSS, there's uh, no board. Yeah, board is yet to be uh, constituted. Yeah. Okay, so Ayuba moving sense that one. But thank you very much for sending in your the messages. video. Let, let's just touch on let's the video start. is important. Just one one minute. We have and then the video. Up. Yeah, the one, video. One one minute. Um, let's look at the the fact that there has been um, a, a reshuffle in the police uh, department now. Um, I think BYT Atenga has been taken to, uh, to the technical department also. Research. Um, research department. Uh, and um, uh, our own DCOP uh, Kofi Boache, uh, no, has, COP. COP Kofi yes. Boache has also been moved. Do you think that um, it's going to bring back uh, arm robbery in Kumasi? Ibrahim, just one minute. I, I, I don't think so, no. Um, okay. I think we have to um, subscribe to the information that the IGP, David Asante Apiatu, has at his fingertips. And they know who fits, who, who can do a, the, the best job where. I mean, the police have their own appraisal system. Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes you find that when you, you, you're moved about, you gain new skills and also you impart new skills to a department. Sometimes you think that a reshuffle mm -hmm. is a demotion. If you know, we, we don't feel that it's where we should be, but oftentimes okay. you can actually come and, and bring a new sense of energy, mm. a new sense of urgency well. to that particular thing. Derek. area. Yeah, I mm. want to give my time for the video to be shown because we've promised, <laughs> we've promised our viewers, we've promised our viewers Very the well. video. They're going to show the video, I'm, yes. I'm sure. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty but sure. I believe also mm. strongly that um, uh, the new IGP, mm. uh, regardless of how he was brought in, wrongly so, um, has an opportunity to, in the short time that he will be IGP. Um, as it were, do what the best he can for okay. Ghana, and we Very want well. to wish him well. Very All well. officers are competent, well. and we hope that they will do their job. Big thank you to you, Derek, for coming. Big thank you to you, Ibrahim, thank for you coming. Kwame. Viewers, thank you very much for watching. It's been Good Morning Africa on Pan African Television. Continue to follow us on Facebook, uh, www.facebook.com forward slash Pan African Television. We're also on Instagram at Pan African TV and on Twitter as well, Pan African TV. You can also follow me on Facebook. Kwame Ousudan. So uh, on Instagram is Kwame Ousudan. So and uh, on Twitter is Kwame Ousudan. So I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye bye. You people, they call change. We are saying change. Where is the change? Just tell me. Look at people. They say they sacked 400 people. How do you want them to survive? We don't give them anything. Look at their his side. Enjoy the hasty. You said you're collecting so much money from the looters. Why are we borrowing? Why are we selling public assets? As far as I'm concerned, this Buhari president very very dead from his life. And I think if you continue like this, the best thing will be for him. He should step aside. Those who voted for change must have now realized that the president they voted for has kept this country paralyzed. If you voted for him, but you're also feeling the pain, I hope you do your best to see it never happens again. We must make sure President Buhari don't rule for another term. We must make him and all of his cabinet apologize to our nation. Yes, for all the troubles he brought. With recession hurts men and strife. And these are things we should never let to ever happen again in this life. Like never again shall our country be governed by APC. Never again shall we let them mess with our economy. That we never felt so much frustration and anger in Nigeria People are hungry and killing each other Yet the government doesn't care Never again shall Nigeria be ruled by a dictator Never again 
Shall the Nara lose value like the paper? Yeah, we must make sure and say in 2019 any other party can win. But the APC must never rule us again. Yeah, we must make sure and say in 2019 any other party can win. But the APC must never rule us again. Are you waiting for the change? You'll be waiting in vain. I don't think that this government employed anybody with brain is only gonna get worse And the truth is you can't complain For the suffering and all the pain you only have yourself to blame We should have never voted a candidate without a certificate It was a criminal offense for Buhari to even participate But now he wants to run a African. You people, they call change. We are saying change. Where is the change? Just tell me. Look at people. They say they sack 400 people. How do you want them to survive without giving them anything?